are a couple unexplored rooms. I don't think you would have gone into any of those. Um, the only thing I think I mentioned to... Oh, right. So I was thinking of changing the way that um, Goodberry worked. Ultimately, I'm not going to do that. It's, you have no little Goodberry. Okay. Um, but I was thinking, oh, you probably would have grabbed some uh, mistletoe from the uh, lab here. But uh, that's not necessary. Uh, but if you wanted to stock up a like uh, herbalism kit or something, uh, there was also Bellic's laboratory or his um, his private study that you had searched. But your search kind of got interrupted by an explosion. Um, it, again, it was already late in that late at night. Yeah, I think when we talked before, I remember that I said that I wanted to like look at more of the plants and take what was useful to me mm -hmm. and I did I, I did originally plan on like looking at his study more but I think yeah. when we were like leaving I think we didn't even go that direction so I don't think I would have I don't think the lot okay. would have tracked again uh, the, the, like as part of kind of going into more detail of what happened you could go back through there if, if you wanted to I mean if it seems like it would be important to the character just, just because we didn't go in there in the like rushed last few minutes of the actual session doesn't mean your character didn't, didn't do that. Um, no, I think it's fine just to <laughs> kind of collect some plants. Oh, somehow the um, oh, okay. I was thinking that the uh, fog of war got misaligned somehow, but of course it's way simpler than that. Than that. Oh god, I'm dragging the fog. <laughs> is that even possible? Yeah, the fog is an object over top of the map on the layer. And it's okay. really, really big, and it was uh, surprisingly annoying to, to place. Um... Yeah, so you ran back through everywhere. You can grab, um, your, we'll say your herbalism kits are full. And uh, I think you can even, um, did you, does this ring a bell? Did you guys find the eye drops of dark vision? No, I don't remember okay. that. That was a item hidden in the in the um, in uh, in the laboratory um, that could have been found, and I I guess it wasn't. So I think going back through it with all the goblins gone, you can find the eye drops of dark vision, which um, uh, have. Uh, uh, and look at how it worked. It's a little glass dropper. Um, it it uh, looks like solid glass. It's like kind of in the shape of a uh, little perfume bottle. Um, uh, there's no lid that comes off. And it looks like there's no interior. It's clear glass. It's almost like an ornament. Um, but I think it's once per day you can open your eye and uh, one drop or two drops are, I guess, come out. How long does it last for? It's the it, it's the spell Dark Vision, so I think it's eight hours. Yes, so, uh, um, is, uh, Malthar is a half elf, I think, or an elf? Yeah, look. I think so. Robert has dark vision, for sure. Oh, he, yeah, yeah, Malthar's an elf, so. 
Roper and Malthar have dark vision. I don't think Nidati does. I unless we went with I don't see it on my sheet. If you're, so. if you're the if you're the player's handbook Dragonborn, then you do not have dark vision. That's too quick. So yeah, one. So either Nido or Ulan can get can basically have dark vision every day with this item. Oh, also, point that. out dark vision <laughs> is a druid spell. I think. No, it's a second level spell, and you're mm-hmm. already going to be using potentially a lot of your spells just to keep the group alive. So that's up to you. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm gonna take Dark Vision as a spell. Um, I think Nidati should probably take the drops, though. I feel like it's more useful. And also with Dark Vision, you know, if you're in total darkness, you're still gonna have disadvantage on perception checks, even with Dark Vision. Still dim light. Because everything's dim light. So a lot of the time, you're gonna want a light source anyway. Um, something I've described before, but because you might be dealing with that a lot. Creatures with dark vision, the way that I kind of see dark vision working, I don't call it infra vision like some people do, but I kind of think of it that way. It's not exactly infrared light, but there is something being put out by your eyes that kind of echoes back into your eyes and, and allows you to... There's, a, there's some kind of light being put out by your eyes that you can see. And no one else can exactly, but I think other creatures with dark vision can faintly see your field of vision. And if you look, if you lock eyes with a creature that has dark vision in the dark, you can see like a glow coming from it. If you have dark vision, creatures without dark vision can't see that. Right. Um, the big decision that was that was talked about uh, at the end of the last session, though, the actual like previous session, I mean, was um, you had you had uh, led down this northern tunnel to the underdark because the or not necessarily to the you know that uh, it eventually will lead to the underdark. Um, uh, um, Roper and Ulan could feel that that it definitely connects to the Underdark eventually. Um, you fled down that passageway because the, cause the, uh, the, 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 the shaft had collapsed the way you had gotten down. Um, well, the shaft didn't collapse, but uh, the, way, the way up it collapsed because of the fight with the dragon. Um... <clears throat> You went down this tunnel, um, running with a lot of uh, twig blights. Um, eventually, the twi- twig blights started kind of recovering from their panic and grouping up together and talking to each other in that way that they do. Um, are you able to send any kind of message to Sean? We've talked about that before. Yeah. I don't want to like bother him. Let's see. He's online, which is weird. Yeah, at the half at the half hour mark, we can. Yeah. We can, we can bother him a little. Um. Yeah, they started like talking to each other and uh, grouping up. They didn't attack you, although some of them tried to follow you, but individually they're not much of a threat anymore at the level you're at, you know how to beat them, you just throw... I mean, Ulan, you can easily, like, guarantee one-shot them uh, with your, I think, your fire cantrip. I guess it's technically not a guaranteed one-shot, but it's enough. Um, If you just throw a fireball at them, they're instant dead. Um, uh, So they would try to follow you for a bit, but then you'd chase them away. Lots of them were running back up the tunnel, though. 
um, but you didn't, you chose not to turn back. Eventually you came through a secret door that had been busted open by the, the twig blights into a, uh, a very old pooling cave, uh, just a void in the earth created by water seeping through this, through the, the earth. Um, the pool in the middle of it had been drained by a sudden crevasse forming at the bottom of it, which is something that uh, Robert mentioned happens in the Underdark sometimes. If you're traveling by water, you got to watch out if the earth shakes at all. Maybe pull your boat to the side for a few minutes because the river might disappear underneath you, sucked underground somewhere else. Um, Roper, oh yeah, you saw a circle of uh, twig blights at the bottom of this dried pool, kicking something. They were like in a circle around something, just sort of beating it up, kicking it. He chased it away, and Roper ran over and cared for a uh, injured adolescent cave leech. Well, that's not dangerous at all. Yeah, is he? He has that now as a as a companion because he's a he's a beast heart, and so his animal companion is a cave leech. Um. It's not a massive cave leech like the one you guys fought. It's about the size of a man. Like, it's about the size of an Idati, uh, but, you know, more compact, just sort of a blob, a blob of flesh. Um, it's still kind of built for swimming a little bit. It's in that transitional phase between... Uh, they, they they grow up as a as an aquatic creature and then once they get too big they crawl up onto the ceiling and start catching things that come near the water how big do they um, get normally hmm? how big would they how get big normally? do they get yeah it's like the size of a cow okay. like a full-grown cattle um pretty pretty big big enough to you know easily easily left a, a fully grown human all right uh, off the ground because i was always imagining like the size of a actual roper mm. ground based with all the room size tentacles all right those things so those things are like really big i guess so as far as i remember i haven't looked at them in a while i mean that makes sense they look pretty big Um, I don't think the cave leeches are quite that big because they don't rely in, on mimicry exactly to, to hide. They do have to conceal themselves up in this one. Got it, got it. So what were these uh, wisdom saves for? They're for my sanity? Yeah, well, so did, uh, I guess I didn't mention to you that, that we're doing sanity. Yeah, you mentioned it, but I don't. I, I see like the counter on my sheet too, but I just don't know like like I oh my... I didn't so I didn't have you do maybe I didn't have you do your let me look at your sanity score I can't remember if I had you do your starting sanity I mean I gave you a starting score but we were gonna go through a couple things that's right um, yeah I think I think you just told me that you put the counter on my sheet yeah. and that I should right. roll two wisdom saves okay so let's let's do did you roll the wisdom saves. Yeah, they're on here on roll 20. I got an 8 and then a 25. So the 8 was for seeing the burning of the Gothaeus tree, which is, there's not very many, um, what's the word? Gargantuan, I think, is the size category. There's very few, if any, gargantuan undead creatures in the world. And you saw one of them burning and screaming underground. I think that's an image that's going to be burned into your mind forever, and it definitely warrants a sanity check. Um, uh, so you are going to take 2d8 sanity loss. You can subtract 6 from your sanity score. 
And you rolled a 28 on your second? 25. 25. That was for your uh, vision, seeing yourself dead under the Glyphaeus tree. Um, and you succeeded on that. Um, if you had failed, I might have given you your sanity back when you proved that vision wrong. Um, uh, but it doesn't matter because it didn't, it didn't shake you anyway. Uh, and I'm going to give you one more, uh, because you are a circle of stars druid who has not seen the sky in like a week. And you've been using your magic a lot. Uh, and you're kind of starting to worry about like losing touch with that. So I think one more wisdom say. This isn't going to be a big one, at least not yet. But obviously this is something that's going to keep coming up. Potentially. 15. I think that's a success. Uh, I won't one? take any damage yet. Ulan's been holding up very well. Is that a condition we can possibly remedy? Yeah, you can regain sanity. Well, no, I'm talking about like the seeing the sky if we're stuck underground sort of deal. Oh, interesting. I'm not. What was the Studio Ghibli movies? Castle in the Sky, where they go underground and they're talking to the old man. In yeah. The, and he's like causing the ceiling to light up. That's my idea is if we can like. I mean, right now it's a little out of character since none of us yeah. know for sure that we're in the Underdark, but... Well, I think your characters can, can think of that and think about it, um, okay. and Roper isn't really equipped to answer that question because he has seen the sky at night. He, I think he mentions that he, he saw the, the sky at night, like, a couple times. Um, underground? And he maybe saw the stars once. Uh, and I won't say what he thought of that. That's for Manny to answer. But uh, we did specifically talk about whether or not Roper ever like went outside. Um, Got it. Because he's from under the ground. Mm -hmm. And most of the kobolds didn't fuck with the surface, even though they were so close to it. So my um, spell focus for being a circle of stars druid is uh, mm -hmm. it's like a wolf of the sky and mine yeah. is a crystal that projects stars when you shine light through it nice so i could I think I you you, you will project the stars that's really good i think you succeeded on your wisdom save and that makes sense because you have this thing like keeping you sane like you can kind of uh, it's not like you're going to forget what the stars look like, but, you know, you meditate on the stars. That's what you've always done, I think. Uh, I, I, I kept meaning to talk to you, actually, about, like, asking you what the stars, like, are to you and to the, the circle of stars. If you don't have an answer to that right now, that's something to think about. Yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> that's not, like... Is there like a god of the stars or something? Um. Back in the book. There's all the deities. I'll think about that. It's something for me to think about too. There are stars that are sort of adjacent to deities, um, but the stars as a whole is something else. I'm not sure. There definitely are a lot of star gods, like, in D&D &D and, you know, um, I like using real historical gods in fantasy. I always think that's kind of interesting. So um, Loon Goddess weird. of the Moon's symbol is a pair of eyes surrounded by seven stars. Mm -hmm. There's also Goddess of Joy, Lyra who is a triangle with three six-pointed stars. Mm. I'll say um, one thing I do know about the stars and like my D&D is that the stars are older than the world and 
uh, I don't know how much your character would think about or know about other worlds, but, you know, they, regardless of what world you're on, the stars are still there. Uh, and they've kind of, at least for the, the, you know, in the context of the lifespan of individual people and also of the world, the stars are, have always been there. So that's, that's something that maybe the, the circle of stars might care about. Um, the very last thing that happened, because you, you were in that pooling cave, um, the way you came in was a secret uh, passage that um, Elec had made. And then there's a way farther down that has like some traffic, it looks like. There's also the way that the kobolds got into the citadel, which used to be a secret underwater tunnel. But now that that pool is drained, it's not underwater anymore. So there is in this room, another way back up to the citadel. And the reason you came down here is because you couldn't go up to the citadel the way that you came. So there is another way that leads directly back up to the citadel, to the upper level of the citadel, where the kobolds are. Well, where the kobolds were and potentially still are, which which Roper is going to mention, that like there might still be kobolds up there. Not all of them died fighting. Not all of them even went to fight uh, the goblins. So, so he's interested in potentially going back up. Um, interested in going back up, but as I recall, we were pretty much decided on continuing mm -hmm. down for now. That's what that's what the 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 con immediate consensus was at the time. Yeah. Um, I did talk to Manning though, and he he was he was also interested in going back up, uh, or at least he thought his character would be. And I also wanted to mention if you were going down, not that you necessarily were, but if you were agreeing to go down because you felt like that was, like the way forward for the adventure, don't worry about that. It's it, 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 it's, yeah. yeah. If we go back up, you'll suck us down in the. Anyway. Yeah, don't worry about that. If you if, if it's if it's clear that like your characters would do something else, right. go for it. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, four hours. Oh, I wonder if it like didn't adjust when like when you said six p.m. UTC. Yeah. Yeah. So Roper is pretty interested in going back up, if only because like there's possibly still people up there that we'd like to find. Um, uh, and Manny mentioned when we were talking before this, because because he's not going to be here, I was like, you know, we should talk before the session so I can get some input from you. Um, he mentioned like. Or are we going to go to town? <laughs> like a bunch of times. Uh, but that's a whole other.
Hmm. See, I see right now. I see eleven. Hang on. Bottom. What do you? Let me see if I can. Uh, the thing you just posted. You yeah. see eleven a.m. on the on the bottom one. I also do, but I feel like that's not what it said before. <laughs> Yeah, before it was correct for me. I think that it was, I think before it was not correct for me because of the time change. I think before it said 2 p.m. And then I had to like right. double check and confirm that it would actually be 1 p.m. because of the hour. Yeah. What a nightmare. I'm going to try the new bot. All right. Oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> what am I doing? Is this the same? Or, or I, I should look at the list first. DJ. If I press stop, is the bot going to leave? Um, the other one shut down if I press stop, and I don't want to do that. No, stop, I won't worry about it. Stop stops the current song and clears the queue. It shouldn't okay. leave. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is it is it getting is it broken? Is it broken forever? No. You can just replay something. Just start something else. And it should re it should rejoin based on the voice channel that you're currently in. Okay. It might be quiet, so it's hard to tell if it's working. <laughs> well, we'll see if that works. Uh, we were just talking about um the decision to go up or down uh, i pointed out that like if you guys were worried about you know picking the the right decision for the adventure don't worry about that um uh i got some input from manny uh and Robert is for going back up into the citadel he points out that there might be Cobalt still up there. Because not all of them came with you to fight the dragon. Or to fight the, the goblins. Yeah, I'm for that. That makes sense. Daniel, it's not working. I know, I know, I'm looking. <laughs> she left it alone. Oh, that sounds. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. Okay. So uh, you're in the dry and empty pooling cave, two ways up, one way down. What would you like to do? Oh, um, also, you got a long rest, I think. A proper long rest. From this point on, we're going to be going into travel mode, though, and we're not doing the DMG alternative resting rules because I think that's too harsh, especially on classes that rely on long rests to get their stuff back. So we're going to be using something else. Uh, I'm going to send it to you, but it's going to take a minute. Where's the, where's the, where's the... 
Okay, when was um <clears throat> when was the long rest? Because I would like to cast Goodberry right before that long rest. Uh, you can cast Goodberry. It was it was you. You're just coming up from that long rest. Okay. You'd be taking a long rest, and then how many of us are there that need to eat a good berry? Well, four or five. The the cave leech makes five. Okay. And we're sticking with. You said the original good berry rules. This is... but you mean like our original good berry rules, where I can only keep ten at a time, right? No, good berry as it is in the book. Right. Okay. So I can just yeah. have as many as I want. Okay. Yeah. I, I gave up on, on that. It, with the original like duration, they, they expire as they do in the in the description. They expire after Don't they expire? hours, I think, right? Yeah. 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 Yep. So yeah. So if you're using that spell, you're use, you're casting a good bear, you're using a spell slot every day to not have to worry about food. That's good. That's great actually. I, I, don't want to change that now that I've actually thought about it. Um, where are they? No, that's not it. I've rolled 20 game discussion. Here it is. It's from... I actually don't know if all of you will be able to view this. I'll post it anyway. It's from the, another DM of mine. Uh, but the important thing is, from now on, you can only take like up to two short rests per long rest. You know what I mean? It's like you long rest and then you can take up to two short rests before you've got a long rest again. Um, so you can't just do like short rests forever. Um, I don't really care about that rule. The long rest rule though, um, you can't do back to back long rests uh, without like a long time in between. I don't have any specific. The, the, the most important thing, the biggest change is that over a long rest, you don't regain full health, you get to roll a free hit die to recover health. Is that starting with this one or starting with this no, one? No, this, this, is, this is your last proper long rest before we go into travel mode. And if you find civilization or some other area that I think justifies going back to the normal rules, we'll do that. But... This is, and this isn't entirely like out of, like this isn't entirely like a, just a game thing. I think it makes some sense that like you're, this is going to be, depending on where you go, like grueling, like nonstop travel that you don't really have time to fully rest. You don't feel fully rested in this place. Okay. So, um, but I guess we'll, I'll, I'll go over the rules again next time you long rest. For now, you get, you get a full long rest, everything comes back. Um, what would you like to do? Um, so where are we? You're in uh, it's a small kind of domed cave with a dry pond bed in the middle of it. Um, there's two ways up. One that you know leads back to the lower levels of the citadel, probably not helpful. That's the way you just came from. The other way up is the Cobalt's path that leads to the upper level of the Citadel. That's the path that Rupert wants to go up. I'm willing to then explore there's, that myself. Then there's technically two paths down. There's the normal path down that 
has seen some traffic, you saw Bell X tracks going down that passage. And then there's a crack in the middle of the floor that is just sort of a vertical cur- crevasse that leads into God knows where um, that the uh, pond drained into. So what would you like to do? My vote's to team up with Roper and try to try to find our way back up. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's see. Tunnel's pretty small. At first, you have to crawl through, or at least, um, Nidati and Ulan will. Um, but, um, bottom of it is like kind of just a little bit mucky still. There's just enough moisture that it's kind of a a thick, nasty soup. Um, uh, you even find some old, slightly rotten, um, fish things down there. They're they're definitely fish, but they're not like any fish that you've seen before. Roper just calls them fish. Are they edible? They probably were. Um, They've been above water for a while now. They've got a smell, but you can try one if you want. Yeah, I don't want Um, comes give me a constitution saving throw. <laughs> yeah, not a difficult one. You're fine. You've had you've had worse. Um, I wouldn't. And you it, have though. like you have a vulture's stomach, yeah. like. Literally, you're an acid dragon. You you don't have any trouble dealing with uh, ingested uh, most 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 uh, foodborne illnesses like this. You don't really get food poisoning. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. That really. Oh, that's cleared out my sinuses. Most of the flavor seems to come seems to have come from like. It has a flavor, but it definitely developed that flavor after death. You, you feel like this fish would not have been very flavorful otherwise. It has kind of like a weird waxy texture to it. Um, With the aftertaste and, uh, of Worcestershire. A bit. And no bones. Well, that's helpful. Um, the... Formerly underwater tunnel emerges in a another pooling cave. Roper describes the way that he, these caves were described to him when they passed through was that they are a series of many, many, many caves created by water dripping down. And uh, these caves are like on top of and beside each other. And a lot of them aren't connected and there's simply no way to get to them, unless you're like a burrowing creature, but some of them are connected by burrows, by crevasses, by um, uh, uh, sometimes the erosion opens up uh, a passage in the floor, which you saw happen, or the beginnings of that happening. Eventually, those two those two caverns will connect. But this pooling cave has a very clear tunnel upwards. You continue up that path. Um, and the ground solid, going right? from at this point, the ground is solid. This was not underwater. Right. Um, and uh, make a survival check. The, the uh, anyone who would like to, or nature. I've got good survival.
I'd also like to just kind of pay attention to the, like, tracks and, like, see what else has gone this direction. Yeah. Um, looking at the floor, it looks like in the past things have used this tunnel. Like, there's nothing that has grown to fully occupy the tunnel. I think, like, with a 24, I can't, I can't even give you tracks of, of anything that came here because it's been so long since something came through here. Nothing larger than a rat has come up this tunnel in years. Um, but you do th believe that at some point a large group of creatures came through either at once or one at a time over, over time. Roper remembers this tunnel, though, and he says that the whole caravan of, of kobolds came through here over the course of, like, you know, a couple days it would have taken them to, to, to get everything up. Um, they were, like, carrying lots of heavy equipment, and uh, there, were, there were a lot of them. Are there any um, mosses or plants or anything that we could possibly tell how long it's been based on how proliferous the fungus is? Um, possibly. Um, I think it's been too long to tell that, but Roper knows that it has been a couple years. Um, they don't track of time as accurately as like um uh people above ground do but uh um they you know you can you can figure out yeah i think out of character we can handle we can we can just say that like in character there's been like some translation between like You've had to figure out how many years does a cobalt usually live? Okay, so that's a generation. That's like, you know, the amount of time that they tend to use. Uh, so it has been, I don't want to put a hard number on it right now, but it's been uh, uh, several years. Okay. When, they, when they came up uh, through this tunnel, the dragon was an egg. So, long enough for it to hatch and uh, grow a bit. It was still a, a wormling when you fought it. Mm -hmm. um, going from the citadel down to that pooling cave took you guys about a... Uh, about a half a day. Um, a few hours into going up this tunnel, you start seeing, definitely with your survival checks and looking for signs in the walls, you immediately notice. You start seeing like dry, like toys poking out. And for a second, you're like, oh, those are roots. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You take another look at them. This is blade. You're seeing bladed roots um, in this tunnel. Golfeus roots, maybe? Or just general plants? With, with those survival checks, um, it would make sense for there to be roots of the Golfeus tree down here. These are very recent, and like you watch them for a few seconds, and one of them like kind of twitches a little bit and grows a little longer. They're not thick, they're like very thin, spidery kind of roots. Very quickly, if you continue up the tunnel, you see thorned roots growing. It's like a very quick transition where you start seeing the walls of this tunnel more and more occupied by branches. Uh, bladed, bladed branches. And up ahead in the tunnel, 
you you round a corner and stop because you can see a um the tunnel is blocked by a mass of uh blighted uh wood material uh just tangled um roots and thorns there's a wall of tangled roots at the end of this tunnel what would you like to do anybody want to fireball it well so like are the roots like the little roots that we've been passing if i like poke one does it react Poking it, it doesn't react to that. Okay. If I, like, with with produce flame, if I just like hold the ball of fire on them, do and they touch? React to that? And you draw close to the to the to the little root sticking out of the wall, and you touch it. It immediately catches fire. Like, as you touch it, it's like, um, it's like when you hold a blowtorch to something and that it, it, you can see, like, the blowtorch is mostly invisible, but where it makes contact with something, that thing just sort of erupts into flame. It's like that. When you touch this thing, it, like, violently, like a sparkler shh, burns and, um, there's, like, the tiniest little, uh, and, like, little growths come out of it as it withers away and withdraws it's like simultaneously growing and shrinking in different parts and it and it just uh blackens and shrivels back into the wall what color is it burning is that not any particular like chemical fire right like, color it's uh um it's like if you it's like if you have a blowtorch up to a to a reed to a dry reed or yeah. something all right I was just thinking maybe blight would burn differently than regular wood. It definitely burns faster and um, hotter. Okay, so that kind of works, I guess. So I can just like throw these at the massive blight, but I'm just like a little bit scared that we're going to like a attacked by and surrounded by thorns or something. Didn't. How, how big is like the tunnel at this point? Is this like, can I stand up now? Um, yes. Now it's 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 high enough for for all of you to stand. It 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 doesn't go very high. It's like three or four feet oh, above your heads, above the tops of your heads. It's about three or four feet. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so we're not still crawling single file. Is the thing I was like worried about that. No, you're not crawling single fire. Okay. Well, if anyone has any major concerns, we can do something else. But otherwise, I think I'm just going to throw a fireball at this. Or not a fireball, a produced flame ball. You make the flame appear in your hand, which is the first part of the spell. And immediately, a lot of these roots here kind of slink away from you a little bit and you see like the walls kind of shift and react to your presence a little bit um and you hear from this direction a very low that like it dies down again you're holding the ball of fire in your hand what would you like to do boy <laughs> I'll I'll throw it at the mass of vines and thorns all right make an attack roll yeah, okay. right. 22 22 you throw it straight ahead it illuminates the uh, tangled mass as it flies Um, 
it strikes one of the one of the uh, thicker roots that's coming through here, um, and like continues past it, kind of like grazing that. And the side of the root that it grazed erupts into flame, and like several branches shoot out of it, touching the walls. Just as it, it in reaction to flame, these things just sort of grow new growths uh, rapidly, uh, and it sizzles and hisses. The fire lands in this tangled mass, uh, and you hear like that kind of shriek. Uh, and as the fire dies out, you just see several more growths sprouting out of it um, where the fire landed. Uh, but now it's dark over here again. A um, couple more roots uh, poke out here. Um, but they seem to like pull back. A lot of the roots here are like slinking back into the ground a little bit, uh, and more are popping out here. They seem to be consolidating in this area. Is there enough room to dash through while they're retracted? Um, you can, you can definitely approach, uh, the, 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 the fire illuminated kind of the, like a lot of the central area here, like up to about here, you could walk on the roots and it made, there would be room for you. They're mostly on the walls and the floor and the ceiling about here, about at this point where I'm pinging, it's, it's like a wall. That's about where the fire lands. So there's definitely you could you could approach up to this point without um you know having to get anything out of the way. You you do hear what sounds like you hear like muttering from over here. And you hear the low creaking of wood shifting. And creaking and stretching and moving. Is it is it like a like a language? Section check? It's a what track? Perception. Perception or insight, depending on what you were intending to find out. Doesn't you've heard these things talk to each other? It, it's like a a cicada whine. They also make, they make different noises. They make like that creaking wood sound. This is more like that. It does sound like language, but it's not, it's not the way that they talk to each other normally. It sounds more like the tree when you heard it moving, but it's a lot quieter. It's very, it's almost feeble. It's, it's like I said, it's almost muttering. I would you like... can't make out any words. I would like. Uh, let's do. I want to hear Malfa first. What were you thinking? Uh, Malfa is willing to like through the beginning root here and see if we get to root. Right. And and as you're doing that, what were you thinking? I am thinking I want to try primeval awareness. Yes. All right. Uh, how long does that take? What are you? Are you a revised ranger? Are you a Ian's ranger? Are you a? I don't remember. It just it says expend a spell slot. You now can sense uh, aberrations, celestials, okay. dragons, elemental fae fiends within one mile. Okay. I'm not going to make it. Okay. 
I, I, uh, we'll get to that. But you start working on that. It's not going to take like ten minutes, but okay. you, 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 nah. Um, Malthar, you're carefully coming up in this direction. Yeah. All right. Um, you do have to walk on the the you know the, the dirt floor becomes more and more inaccessible as it's kind of keeping it by uh, the roots as you lay your feet on them they're clearly hollow they're not like they don't have the mass of like a real tree root it's um um the twig lights were hollow but even like you step on one of these and it like collapses some not all of them collapse but one of them does and you can definitely feel that like they're not as massive as they as they appear um, but they're still able to like completely occupy this this area. Um, but yeah, you can. It's difficult terrain from this point on. So from uh, from this point um, on, it's difficult terrain. To move forward without roots, possible. So do you want? Hang out a bit. Can you say that last part again? You're cutting out a bit. I, I couldn't hear everything you said. Well, I can see you talking, but I'm not hearing it. Um, why don't you, why don't you type for now? Maybe we'll figure it out. Um, you can type in, in roll 20, that'll be the easiest. You can talk too, but I'm not hearing everything you say. Uh, let's do primeval awareness. Um, well, that's while you're typing. Um, oh no, here it is. Looking forward. Well, not trying to touch the roots. Got it. Um, make a stealth or acrobatics check, whichever you would prefer. Definitely a dexterity check. Boy. <laughs> so, um, one of the larger uh, roots that you, um, you're trying not to test the roots. I think you just fall over, um, which is not like, it's not embarrassing. It's like very difficult terrain. I think you stumble a little bit and you attempt to brace your knee on one of the large roots. Uh, you're avoiding touching it with your skin but you can feel you're, go you're going to slip. And so you jerk your knee over to brace yourself on one of the larger roots and it completely lets you down. It gives in and collapses and you fall forward, um, crushing one of these large roots. Doesn't react. All of you over here can, can see and hear that. Um, and Malthar, you stand up and I think you're over here. Um, you look in this direction and it kind of looks like there's a face in the roots. You weren't looking at it before, but now like immediately you see like kind of a nose and the depressions of two eye sockets. And as the roots like slide against each other, they part the bottom. It kind of looks like a mouth and it mutters. Make an insight check. Just mouth are. Quite dark over here. Wait, do you have a, did you bring a light source with you, mouth are? No. Okay. 
So it's, it's quite dark over here. Malthar can see it with his dark vision. Everyone else might be able to if it weren't obscured by roots and just sort of distance. Um, yeah. Um, in the face, as you're like face to face with it, what do you what do you do? Um, what are the what are the things that um, permeable awareness senses again? Uh, it was basically primeval beings, aberrations, celestials, dragons, elemental, fey, fiend, and undead within one mile. Gotcha. Location um, and quantity are unknown, but I think that's kind of irrelevant as of now. Unless there's you something else. Feel many, many undead. Not a singular great undead, which you, I would tell you if it was the Goltheus tree. You've been up close and personal. You don't feel the Goltheus tree or any of its roots. It's just a lot of little things. You you feel many undead creatures all around you. And Even they are focused here. up here. Okay. A little bit. Uh, but they're mostly over here, right in front of Malpar. Um, and like continuing down that tunnel, you can feel many, 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 many. Um, the face is making the noise. Um, and I think if, if you, you just kind of stand and stare at it, it eventually like the mouth moves in rough accordance to what it says it's kind of making the right shapes but not quite at the right time uh and it says dying And you hear like little, little, <laughs> like weird little cackles around you. Uh, Did any of that come through? Just the laughing. But it's more okay. Sean's translation than anything. Or yeah, not, make a, I think it would be hard to understand. So if you didn't completely understand what I said, that's fine. With your insight, he, he said the word flesh. It said the word flesh a couple times. And it said trapped underground. And then it laughed. Uh, I can hear you. It, 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 that, that, that came through. It's choppy. Kind of cuts in and out every couple seconds. Yeah. Uh, well, Martha is going to see the uh, high tail All right. You turn. Um, uh, make another uh, acrobatics. Uh, check for stealth. You can do stealth. Really? Yep. <laughs> uh, Malthus going to use his bonus. Uh, bonus action to dash? Yeah. All right. Um, but I do need another stealth or acrobatics. Okay. Uh, the nine was the. Oh, that's where you're saying it really is because you rolled another nine. <laughs> um, yeah, you do use your action to dash. Um, uh, one of the one of the branches seems to move out of its way to trip you as you pass over this area, um, and you do stumble forward. You don't fully face plant, but you stumble forward as as you go, uh, and the face continues. 
There's a face in there, guys. There's a face saying... It starts to crawl. Like, you can feel, like, the ground rumbling and you, this horrible crunching sound as the face starts to move forward. Yeah. No. Um, very, very slowly. And you guys can definitely see it now. It's mm. it's much more defined and it's moving slightly. Um, and you could, the whole time you were able to hear the voice. Um, uh, and and it, it, it uh, continues to speak a little bit more clearly now. Um, uh, and it says, We have no mercy for into darkness, buried beneath our dying citadel. Or undying citadel. Did, did you catch any of that? We have no mercy for dot 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 into darkness dot 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 undying. Yeah, uh, the, the the last part that you would have heard clearly is perish beneath our undying citadel. Uh, and it, it it stops moving forward once it's about here. Um. What would you like to do? Well, it looks like we're not going this way. <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, yeah, I can't sense, I couldn't sense how far back, but it did go back quite a ways from what we see. What's the range of um, primeval horns? One mile. One mile. And it's a duration of you, two minutes. You've been three through. Minutes. You've been through the Citadel before, you've got a sense for it, mm -hmm. and you can kind of feel where it is in relation to this. It's like the length that you've traveled up this tunnel, it's like another length that that, that far up to the Citadel. Mm -hmm. You can just barely feel that top um, level because the, the tunnel's not direct, it kind of snakes around. Sure. You can feel it up there and you feel, there were a lot of twig blights that were in that underground chamber. Um, the uh, many, many children of Gothaeus um, are still there, and it seems that they have claimed the citadel, or what's left of it. The place is overrun with them. They were there, but they were underground. They were. Uh, but I didn't. They were, yeah. I didn't sense the. Goltheus tree, right? Like you did we're, not, and you were pretty you sure not. we killed it then. Or... Yeah, it, it, the Goltheus tree, you, I think you feel its like body up there, and it's still burning. Oh, wow. And it is dead. Okay. You did destroy the Goltheus tree. Like actually dead, dead. <laughs> However, undead yeah. it is. Um, All right. But the many children of Gulfaeus are still there, uh, and they've walled off every entrance that they could. I'm going to agree with Ulam. There's no way through here. But as a kind of test, I would like to um, light up a torch and just advance upon this All right. wooden face thing. And just see if I can make it retreat a little bit. I'll I'll follow and uh, or I'll stand like kind of to the other side and like hold produce flame in the other direction and see if we can like make a tunnel kind of. Mm -hmm. I use this barrier to sort of show where the face is now. Yeah. Um, you walk up to it and it does kind of stop advancing. Um. And a lot of the little roots kind of like slowly shrink away from you as you walk forward with torches and with your produce flame. But the face is like defiant. It's not moving backwards. 
uh, and a lot of the thicker roots are slowly, not like growing, but like rolling over towards you, kind of pushing in. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just sort of creating a thick wall here. Um, uh, what's happening um, behind it? They're standing off with behind you. Yeah. Ooh. A lot of the thinner, like spindly root systems, uh, the last ones that didn't retreat are still here. And they're almost moving in a little bit more, but kind of curiously over towards Althar and Roper, but they're not like doing anything. Okay. They they seem like organized, but all but not completely. So it's not like we're creating a fire bubble and just moving through this mass. It's more like it's retreating not in exactly. front of us. Yeah, it's like fairly. It, it, it's almost. It, it is reacting to your movement of the fire, but not like, not like, like it's clearly thinking. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just moving around in a bubble around you. You're moving forward and it's consolidating to where you're moving. Okay. So it's just getting thicker uh, and thicker. And you're, you're standing off against the face. Uh, and the face is silent now, but it's just staring at you. It's kind of empty impressions of eyes mm -hmm. um what would you like to do retreat Ulan. i'm for retreating at this point Reach. yeah i don't i don't think we're getting through this okay no yeah let's just we got to keep jeb alive <laughs> or roper alive Last thing you notice, just kind of standing there with the flames, uh, the face, it's a little reminiscent of Belek. Like, like, um, but just like a, um, the same kind of face shape and like nose structure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't remind you of him in any other way. It doesn't act like him, doesn't sound like him, but just the features of the face are vaguely reminiscent. Okay. Can we find out what happened? Yeah. What happens? Uh, do we ever find out what happened? What? To the zealot? Uh... To Belek? Yeah. Uh, you killed him, I think. Um, I think he died. Was it a uh, moonbeam? Sounds right. Mm. Yeah, that might be right. It was towards the end of the fight, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the last thing that happened. Oh, was that my? Who did? Didn't I like kill someone with like a final guiding bolt? Yes, that yes, that's what it was. It was a guiding bolt. And then we just firebomb the tree after that and yeah. realize yeah. there's no sense in continuing to firebomb the tree. Let's just get out of here. It's going to go down. Yeah. Uh, the, the face just kind of like stares at you while you're standing there. And as you walk away, it kind of slinks back a little bit and, and laughs at you again. And uh, the finger. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need an insight check to tell the like it, whatever sentience this thing has is, is like kind of strange and it's not quite human. Not that you're technically human either, but there is like a bitterness to its laughter. Like it there's like it it's not it doesn't actually find this funny. It's a bit like, like, yeah, yeah, get it, like, stay out. And it's my gesture of, yes, a single cloth. Good. It's like, you too, stay out. Here's the barrier. So now there really is no way but down. Okay. Um, takes a couple hours to get back down to the, to, to the hole, but you're, uh, you haven't done much today, so he's setting off down down the tunnel. Yep. Seems it. 
So Ropert has been this way before. Um, he I mean, I'll let you, I'll let you discuss it. Like, what are you planning to do? I'm planning on asking <laughs> Roper, where to from here? Do you recognize this area? I mean, yes, you recognize this area, but. It's been a while, but um, I'm not going to attempt to do, I don't remember what was, what, what, what man was in for. for. It. It was he, a long time ago. Is there like a cobalt village down here? Or yeah. homeland or something? Yes. I'm um, trying to find it. My, it, it. It was a long time ago, but I do remember the way. It took um, a long time to get up, but it, it hopefully won't take us. Uh, I'll, what, what he says is that for the um, kobolds setting out from their city, it took them about a month to get to the Citadel, but they were traveling upwards as a large group carrying supplies through unexplored shallows, um, which shallows are the terrain that you're heading into, the um, kind of wild lands between the uh, surface and the true Underdark. Um, very prone to tectonic activity and large predators. Um, there's not a lot of civilization there to be found. Um, not a lot of roads either. Um, they had to backtrack many times. Uh, and he doesn't go into detail, but he says that there were setbacks. Um, Did any of you stay uh, behind? Unless you ask, unless you ask. Did any of, you, any of you stay behind? Were any of your kind? Yes, we were only a small, small group. Okay. We were taking the, the egg to the Citadel, oh. trying to find, also trying to find and recover the Citadel. Udrael knew that it had sunk in below the ground and um, was receiving visions from a shard of light. Um, it was very difficult to find from under the ground. Uh, he can tell uh, the story of, of the Please the, do the journey actually, to the citadel. Yes. Well, I'm not. I'm not curious. Is over was, your... was Calcarix originally from this the Shallows place? How did no, you? How Calcarix did you come in? Was in possession of this. Robert day? doesn't exactly know where Calcarix came from, but they had the egg that hatched into Calcarix in the city. And it was this like caravan of kobolds that traveled with the egg and with Udrail to the citadel to kind of eventually, hopefully, raise the dragon in the citadel to one day make its horde there and become a leader right. in that place. Because um, um, as a dragonborn, I don't ever recall. I mean, I personally don't ever recall hearing of dragons born underground or being raised underground. Make, um, make a history check with advantage. Okay. 18. 18. 
you're not sure like what, there are lots of different kinds of dragons out there um but Calcarix was the same like not the same lineage as you but like it was a white dragon wasn't it what what would be what would be called a true dragon that's what Calcarix was um okay and that's a very like you're not sure how accurate that term is, given how many different kinds of dragons there are. Whether Calcarix's kind is the, the true dragon, mm -hmm. but that's what they're called. And Calcarix was a white dragon with wings. Calcarix definitely did not belong in the Underdark. Right. Um, which is potentially why the Kilhans worked so hard to bring him above ground. Or at least closer to the surface. But um, he is he also was kind of an embodiment of an elemental being, right? I mean, dragons by nature are just elementals in a sense. From what I've read, no They definitely have life. elemental affinities, at least. Right, right. Um with an 18, uh, not necessarily elementals, but the elemental affinity is very, very, very strong. And um, I think in my like world, the way I think about the different like colors of dragons is that it is a defined lineage. And like, like every white dragon is real in some way to every other white dragon. And they inherit memories generationally and even you i think i think we talked about this before you sometimes have dreams of being a black dragon mm -hmm. you have very very faint memories of dragon ancestors okay um but uh Dude, they set know. off do the people have any record of how they got how they got Calcrix? Uh the the egg that became possibly, but uh Robert doesn't know. I think then finding our way to the what are they called? The shallows would be a worthwhile goal. Robert says they would definitely be interested to know the fate of Calcarix. And then he pauses and is like, I wonder if we shouldn't tell them everything that great. happened up there. I <laughs> that, that seems to like make him anxious, uh, but he continues to tell the story and distracts himself a little bit. They left the city. Um, Uh, by land, um, following the old road upwards until it ended in a landslide, an old landslide, uh, one that not not a landslide down, but a landslide that covered the road. They spent about a week scrambling and finding paths up that massive landslide. Um, it the scouts found that it ended in a or that it that it voided a vertical chasm the vertical chasm was voided by the landslide um climbing up that vertical chasm they found that the landslide was caused by the passage of the dreaded purple worm a massive empty tunnel uh that passed over the chasm they they were able to lift their gear and all their kobolds up into the empty tunnel left by the worm who knows how long ago exploring the tunnel in either direction they found two paths upward a system of burrows and a system of rivers he says something happened in the burrows 
but he doesn't entirely recall, but it was bad. All right, he, he can go into it later if you want, but he's going to move on for now. Ultimately, they went up the rivers. That took a long time. There were leeches. It was very treacherous. Um, they had to backtrack because they went too far upriver. They found a horizontal or a, a diagonal rift, like the ground had sort of shifted outward like this at an angle that they had to climb up. It took a long time. Um, let's see. The diagonal rift eventually led to these pooling caves where you are now. Um, they spent a long time navigating through the pooling caves um, so they found the one that had that underwater passage that led to Citadel. You currently are in the pooling caves. And I think for the first day of travel, um, I need a survival check to navigate the pooling caves. Um, Somebody can do it and have advantage if someone helps, but who's going to be making the survival check? Come on, you have better survival than me. And he's got a plus All five. Right. Oh, I didn't notice the music right now. M Maltha will help. You need that now, right? <clears throat> Not you. Wait, do I get advantage? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Twenty-two. So you um, are able to find the most traveled paths between these pooling caves. Um, they've changed a little since Rupert was last through here. Obviously, the one above drained. Um, uh, you have to go through a couple burrows that have been made by creatures between the pooling caves. Um, you see one or two lone, like solitary uh, twig blights that fled downwards and are now just kind of like sulking in back corners, watching you go by, not sure what to do. But those, you pass them by. Um, and eventually you don't see any more. Um, with a 22, by the end of the day, you come to a cave that um, Roper remembers and says we're close to the rift. Um, But it's you're starting to get tired, so it may be time to rest. You don't have a day night cycle to go by, so it's difficult to time your rests. Could Is I, there any way that yes. uh, could I along this travel during the day be marking our path so that we can find our way back if we need to? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, just bread cream. You can definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. Anything specific that you're doing to mark your path? I can't think of anything really okay. useful. You can I, do, you can do yeah, different stuff. I've got a spear I can write. I don't yeah, have, I don't know like druidic, but carve. I can just do like a... If you have like a dagger or a spear or something that you don't care much about, then you can just scratch into the stone and you know that will last. Write, yeah, I'll write draconic runes. 
can do that. You can definitely do that. Um, do you have like a dagger or a spear that you don't care much about to do this mm -hmm. with? Because if you're doing this repeatedly, you might just want to remove that as a usable. <laughs> got my, got don't my, remove it. But. Got my short sword. I can use that. Okay. That's about all, though. Because I think eventually, by the end of this travel, I'm going to give that sword like a minus one or, or minus two until it gets repaired. Okay. If you're just constantly using it to scratch into stone. Yeah. yeah. But but that will mean that you're marking your path in a way that will last. Yep. I agree. I like it. Right. Just, just, just make sure you know which, which weapon you're using for that. Um, Oops. Uh, oh, Ulan does have druid craft. So if you want, you could keep track of time that way. Oh, I didn't know it could do that. Yeah, it can, it can, I think, I think it can tell. I think with druid craft, you can tell what time of day it is. Or maybe it's the weather. It might be the weather. I think it is weather. Weather? All right. Maybe not. Miles above, on the surface, it is raining. Does it matter? Yeah. So, yeah, you're having a difficult time telling how long uh, to go between rests. But I'm not sure how to gamify that. So, for now, I'll just say it's time to sleep. Um, you haven't spent any resources, really, so this wouldn't be like, uh, you're not really going to cover anything here, but I'll roll, I just need to roll around. I could do another primeval awareness and the growling of the stomachs tells me it's time to rest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like a huge waste of primeval awareness, though. I think, yeah, you've got a druid and a ranger. You've got um, ways to, you can use your meals to regulate a little bit uh, how long you travel. Um, there's ways you can keep track of time, but it's like a constant thing you're having to be aware of, which is kind of unnatural. So that's a little bit like nothing. Um, but every time you rest you have a moment to do like some down, downtime stuff if there's anything you want to do there i will roll random encounters um and i'll just call for a perception check from someone keeping watch i'm not going to do shifts i'm not going to do like everybody do you know i'm, I'm not going to make it we'll, we'll just pick one person mm -hmm. we'll, we'll say you are doing shifts for the rest but whoever decides to roll the perception check is the person who's going to be on shift when something happens. Cool. So, who's going to do a perception check for the rest? I thought it. Only a perception check. And for downtime, uh, let me think. The only thing I can think of, um, Nigeri, I know you were planning on. You have a note. You have a. You have a journal that I think you're planning on doing stuff with. Uh, your character has a journal. Oh, uh, um, do I? But we didn't, we didn't really have time. Yes, know, Berkey, sure. I have Berkey's journal, and it teaches me deep speech. Yeah. I don't know. If you, ever wanna, if you ever want to do anything with that during a uh, what is deep speech long rest, just let, just let me know. Oh, so it's not deep speech. I think I, I waffle a little bit on that. There are things in there that deep speech is ha, has a presence in the notebook but i think you wouldn't know that and besides deep speech i don't think it even has a written language i don't even know what that you would reckon you would all all of you looking at it you would know that it's in abyssal the notes are written in abyssal but uh, does anyone speak abyssal Um, everyone who, who looks at the book can make a history check. Okay. In and among the writings, that lots of... Oops, 18. 
18. It's not quite abyssal. You've seen abyssal in like, you know, there would be abyssal written in like a church or something, like recording something <laughs> evil. Um, um, you, you, um, you may have seen abyssal before. It's not written left to right. There are no commas in abyssal. There are no periods in abyssal. But those are all here in these notes. It's written left to right. With spaces between the abyssal uh, pictographs with commas, periods. So it's not written the way abyssal usually is. Um, there's also several drawings in there, um, in in odd places, uh, and they're they're not annotated or anything. They like, um, and they're always like, there's a drawing that's just a circle, and there's a drawing that's, um, let's see, there's a drawing of several lines like this, kind of like the Eiffel Tower, they come up at a slope and meet. Mm -hmm. Several lines like that. There's a drawing of two lines that come up like this, but then they form a helix. And there's several curved lines that come up like this and mirror, mirror each other like this, like this, like this, kind of like spider legs. There's two like that, and there's two like that, there's two like that. And they very faintly, the one in the middle, you can see it very faintly, almost, almost touches at the top. It doesn't quite. They fade out as they go up. And there's just, those drawings are spread out through throughout the notebook. They just don't seem like they represent and I mean, like I said, one of them is just a, just a ring. Mm -hmm. um, the, the notebook is, um, the papers aren't like bound to the, uh, to the, uh, to like a spine. They're loose papers that are held together in, in this thing. Um, uh, and there's, there's plenty of blank papers on, at the bottom. Um, but yeah, uh, nothing happens on this, on this long rest. And the next day you reach the diagonal rift. Um, you can, at the top of it, you can tell it, I mean, it's going to take, uh, you can't see the bottom right now. Um, Ropert said it took a couple days to get everyone up through this rift, um, but the scouts were able to make it in, a, in like an hour, maybe two, if they went slowly. Um, the way that he described the rift is he described them kind of hiking up it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a kobold could hike up this rift, but the ceiling is not high enough to stand. You guys are going to have to crawl down this rift or um, slide. climb, slide. <laughs> um, and in some places it's steeper than others. It's sometimes the roof comes down to meet the floor in places and there's like a section that you can squeeze through. It looks like a nightmare um, from even the part that you can see. And it goes down for possibly hours of travel. What would you like to do? I'm immediately thinking 
leather armor plus bed roll equals a great sled. <laughs> I think you can definitely try that. Um, I want to know your marching order, and hold on, I'm going to switch you back to the main screen and we'll set your marching order there, and we'll take that as as the marching order. So arrange yourselves top to bottom, or however you'd like. Single file. You're not always going to have to travel single file, but for the purpose of the marching order. From this point on, you're going to have to leave the wheelbarrow. Oh, dang. <laughs> probably no, well, no. let's use the you wheelbarrow. Might be able to, you might be able to get the wheelbarrow down there. Can I, it might, it might be possible. It, does it fit? Let's say Roper tries to bring it along. It, was like it fits jamming at least at the top. So who's going first and what are you doing? Sledding, are you wheelbarrowing? Oh, light sources. Let's set these on the on this page too. Uh who's got who's got light sources under normal circumstances when you're traveling? I have a couple torches. Produce flame, which is basically just a torch, right? Okay. Produce flame. Nidati has a torch. Yeah. All right. And Malto is going to rely Are these good symbols? Yeah. Okay. Those are those are. Uh, I can show you the pictures. Um, okay. Uh, you got very close. Cool. So the circ, the ring. I mean, that's obviously you got that one dead on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The spider legs, it's a little more like this. Okay. And they, this, this one, like, you can tell it kind of wants to meet in the middle. Possibly the others do too, but it's, it's hard to tell. They fade out as they go. You can't see them meeting at the top because they fade. Okay. Uh, and this one has a notation underneath it in that like weird abys abyssal code. There's a notation underneath it. Um, the helix you know, comes to me and then it continues. Like I had it, except mine's really short. Yeah. Okay. And then this is just, this is also it's maybe a little a little taller than you had it. It, it continues upward in a line after it meets. Yeah, those are all the drawings. Okay. Um. <clears throat> oh no! I've created a bunch of text that's invisible. Um, Ulan has a produce line. All right. And Malthar and Robert, between your light sources and your dark, and their dark vision. It's good. Um, and that means half the party has free hands. Um, well, Robert's pushing a wheelbarrow. <laughs> 
with Roper, get in the wheelbarrow. I'll push it. Well, wheelbarrow is occupied. Oh, right. This is a big guy. Unless you, it's pretty soft. If you wanna, it's kind of a nice cushion. It's it's sort of wet. <laughs> um, as for food and um, water, in the pooling caves, you could drink groundwater potentially. But uh, that's up to Ulan. Why is that up to me? Because you have uh, well, maybe water. not. Maybe not. If if you if you aren't producing water. Uh, oh yeah, no, I can't. I thought you meant if we were drinking it. <clears throat> right. Um, I mean, do I have a way of like knowing if water is safe to drink? Is that like a survival check? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Survival or nature. I also, I don't know if this matters. Or like the Underdark um, when mm-hmm. we get there, but I do have the Outlander background, and it says that I can find food and fresh water for myself mm. and five other people. I think that will help. Right. Maybe a lot. It's not going to be a guaranteed thing because right. this That's is far outside of... Um, but that'll help. Definitely. Okay. But, so like at this point before we're like totally into the Underdark, am I still finding water? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, actually, you don't need to make a, with that, you don't need to make a, a, a survival check. You're able to, you are all able to get safe uh, water from these pooling caves. It's filtered through the rock, so um, it's quite safe. Um, it's also stagnant, but, like, you're able to find places where it's, like, dripping, and, like, if you rest, during your long rest, you're able to, like, find a place where you kind of gather up your... Um, you're able to fill all of your um, uh, flasks for the day. Um, uh, I have, yeah. So I have create or destroy water, which I can use later if we need to, obviously. But I also just have shape water, which I feel like just makes it. That's easier. that makes it so easy. That, that like if there's a if there's a drip along the wall, you don't have to worry about like holding the holding the water skins up to the wall. You can just kind of whoop put it in. Um, and avoid the stagnant water on the ground. Um, and yeah, through the throughout the pooling caves, you had water. Um, uh, and you have water currently. So what are you doing at the Nidotis in the front? Sure. What would you like to do? Looking down at the slope. Very mm-hmm. low ceiling overhead. I'm crouched down test to see if it's going to be crawlable eh, cringe a little bit i'm going to set up the bedroll and the leather armor deal meaning i'll have to take off the leather armor and kind of make a little makeshift sled out of the two of those things okay. so you're currently unarmored yes we'll try to toboggan um, but, down that's my idea but i'll how, say that's how enough to the, how long is this slope can't see the bottom of it. Um, there's not a straight like, visibility all the way down. Um, make an intelligence check to try and figure it out between Robert's descriptions and what you can see. Yeah, sure. Could be. I mean, it's definitely long. It, 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 he said that the fastest scouts did it in an hour. So, so my idea here is if we're going to sled down and then if we pick up too much speed, I'm going to cast Entangle. Oh! And then that will maybe slow us down. I don't know if it would stop us, but like then we can kind of slow down and not like crash at the end or whatever. Are you going to try to sled together? Oh, well, That's I figured idea. we were That might be dangerous, I guess. No, I like that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. You, your entangle will be kind of like the spikes of a, a miner's elevator. If it yeah. starts free falling, you just send the spikes into the wall. And... <laughs> Roper will get in his wheelbarrow with the cave leech. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I think it's just wide enough that you could like get side by side. You can already see down down the slope. There's a section where it's like 
the, the bot top and bottom meet, and so you're all going to have to go down the left side. <laughs> so you can't go all at once, but you can st- try to stay together, potentially. Okay. So what, are you all doing the bedroll trick that Nidotti's doing and just padding it with... You've got like a shield or something like that. That's right. Shields too. I think Roper has Roper has a feat that allows him to craft things with rope very quickly and proficiently. I think he can help you assemble makeshift toboggans um, using rope, uh, not exclusively rope, but the rope you know helps. Um, yeah together make toboggans just if you have an idea mention it so i can describe what your toboggans are made out of my dad is, is a bedroll and leather armor yeah what's on what's on the bottom of it the leather armor yeah as the as okay. the solid thing the bedroll okay. is just to kind of shore it up you know. okay it's just a stretch of the imagination i admit no, well, it's, it's it, it, and he'll like run the rope, run the rope through sections of like the arms of it and uh, loop the arms up so you can kind of hold on to the arms and you're lying on the body and the legs of it, um, and you've got kind of the back of the bed roll over your shoulders a little bit so you're kind of like wrapped up in it a bit. You can keep the arm, the chest plate of the armor below you, and you're primarily sitting on that anybody's got a buckler that'd be a perfect saucer for sledding i have a wooden shield yeah yeah that can be the the, the, the base of it um um Malthar? uh yeah Malthar doesn't act, have any bedroll so Malthar's just kind of gonna crouch down and walk slowly Okay, Malthar is going to try to keep up. <laughs> um, but luckily you're a little shorter than everyone else and you're very quick and nimble, so you might be able to... You're not going to be able to keep up, but you can catch up. At least. <laughs> um, all right. What is this gonna be? I think this has to be a skill challenge. Um, because I don't have, yeah, I think this is gonna be a skill challenge. You line up at the top of this rift and one by one, you kick off. Yeah. All right, I thought first, you start sliding and immediately you start going way too fast, mm-hmm. way too fast, oh God. And you uh, are going to have to swerve to the left around the first obstacle. And as you pass it, you can see like this thing goes down, 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 down. You you can. And I yell back. This may have been a massive mistake. I yell back up the tunnel. (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) You you hold on to the to the to to the bargain successfully. Um, I think for just a quick makeshift skill challenge, I'm going to want three successes from each of you and every failure is going to, it's not like there's not a hard fail state. It's not going to be like three successes or three failures. You need three successes, but each failure is going to result in an encounter of some kind. Um, not necessarily a combat encounter, but like something's going to happen every time you fail. Yeah. And you get to the bottom after three successes. See how long that takes and what happens <laughs> until then. Okay. So the first, first is Night Eye. Hmm. What, what kind of check are you going to make first? <laughs> Check you, you're you're going to have to make three of them, and they can't. None of them can be the same for you. Somebody else could do the same one, but for you, you're going to have to come up with three different checks. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you think you're doing to try and avoid obstacles down here and, and get down safely? I'm the first one I can think of 
is to try to throw my weight to the left just to make sure I don't get pinned under that corner that's okay possibly do you, do you think that would be athletics sure okay. yeah it would be right. mostly because I'm terrible at that in real life as I've experienced okay, see. <laughs> excellent yes you 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 definitely avoid the first obstacle and it opens up after that uh, mm -hmm. for a while. You, have, you also speed up. You continue to speed up for a while. And you catch just the tiniest bit of air, which is terrifying because, like, you have to, like, oh, God. You, you, like, brush the ceiling, and which mm -hmm. forces you back down. Um, and you, like, lose sight of where you're going for a second. Uh, what's next? I am going to go, if, if it's fast enough yet, no, I might save that one until the third one. But that's the only one I can think of is if I'm going too fast, how can I still see? Are you, are you going to try to, I'm uh, gonna try to manage see. your speed? Mm. Oh, you're going to try to keep track of where you're going. Yes. Meaning the wind right, make a perception check. is way too, is kind of starting to blind me. Perception. That's a good one. 12. Okay. With a 12, you butt up hard against the wall, and you're going to take... You're going to take seven uh, damage, just mm -hmm. sort of skidding against the wall on your bare, scaled arm. Mm -hmm. um, um, you can attempt, if you fail, you can attempt the same check again, or you can do a different one. I'm not going to say they have to be each one unique, even if you fail. Uh, that, that, you could run out. At this point, out. I would actually try the athletics again just to get away from the wall. Can't do that one again. No. Okay. Because you succeeded on that one. Okay. Um, something with dexterity, I'm going to try to slow down. Like reach back. I could that would be an easy substitute. Okay. 18. 18 to kind of okay. take the sword you, out and use it as like a rudder or a break or something. Yeah. And you've got the you you're you're on the edge now. You've already collided with it. You can slow yourself down a little bit. And you hear now that it's a little bit quieter, you're paying attention to your surroundings. First of all, you hear the next person starting to go down. Okay. But you also hear rocks like thump, 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 and you one whizzes by your head mm -hmm. rocks that you've loosed by sliding down that are now catching up to you okay. as they like tumble violently <laughs> down the slope big hitting rocks. the floor and the ceiling as they go some of them are pretty big um that's two successes what's next mm -hmm. I hear somebody behind me. I'm tempted to throw caution to the wind and just let it fly. <clears throat> but that's kind of scaring me. I'd rather not. Um, I'll retry the perception okay. just so I can get my bearings. 18. Right. You see the person coming up behind you and you um speed up a little bit but now you're you're focusing completely on like okay i can't lose track of where i'm going um you you maintain your speed carefully and uh you get into a rhythm where you're able to skate down the steepest section of this rift nice. um the next person uh uh would be roper tumbling down in the wheelbarrow um does anybody have control over reports? No. Now you should. Um, let's 
Somebody make a survival check for Roper. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Ooh. Nice. He quickly disappears out of view around the first obstacle. Now roll a animal handling check. <laughs> what is this for? He's getting the cave leash to help him? <laughs> or keeping the cave leash from mm -hmm. slipping out the back or something. Rupert takes five piercing damage. Um, try that check again, and we'll hit him. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Three piercing damage. <laughs> okay. Um, do an athletics check. All right, that's two successes. Now one more animal handling. Hopefully one more. There it is. Okay. I'll describe that later. Next up is Ulan on your wooden shield and bedroll. Uh, to buy. Uh, start out with a survival check. All right. Tell me what they are before you roll them. But this makes sense. Yeah, so um, survival um, check, like difficult terrain. Yes. Uh, yeah, knowing like w how, what the cave is going to be shaped like before you get there. And, uh, yeah, um, you can already see the rocks tumbling and you avoid some of those. Um, uh, what's your next check going to be? Next, I will do athletics. I think that's pretty... Straightforward. That's just a yeah, bit definitely. Thing. This is very physically grueling. Cool. What was that? I'm not looking at all twelve right now. Twelve. Uh, that's not very good. Um. Uh, hold on, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, 12 athletics. Um, yeah, one of those rocks is going to hit you from behind. Uh, one of the rocks that uh, got loosed. Or... Nine bludgeoning damage. Um, and you can roll that again, or you can try something. Jesus. Else. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll do that again. Eight. Worse. Eight. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna so die. This time. <laughs> this time. You avoid the rocks and you swerve out to topple on your, like, you, you, the, the shield slides out a little bit and you're sliding on bedroll. You need to make another check. I think you need to make another check. Uh, it's going to have to be athletics and it's going to have to be at the disadvantage. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot to change back to You completely lose control of your movement. Slide 
in the opposite direction you wanted and you're not even sure what happened, but you stop moving. You take eight more damage. You're very disoriented. It's dark. Uh, what was your light source? Produce flame. You lose concentration on that. Not that it's a concentration spell, but you don't have it on right now. So it's dark and you can't, you can't like breathe in all the way. Like you're trying to catch your breath and you feel winded, but then you realize like something's pressing on my chest. You're wedged. So Malthar, you've seen everyone else slide down and you can't see them anymore. Are you going to? Yeah, I'll go to. What's your first check going to be? Uh, shuffling down slowly. Um, uh, I guess perception will just see where, where we need to go. Yeah. DC is going to be lower for you because you're not tobogganing. Um, so yeah, climbing down, you can looking farther down, you can see the tumbling rocks. Um, you know what though? You would be disadvantaged unless you have a light source. Do you have one now? Um, hmm. I no. Okay. Um. <laughs> So you, you can hear the tumbling rocks, and very distantly you can see Nidati's torch disappearing. Um, uh, and like the dark patches of rocks tumbling, you know, against that faint light. Um, um, you eventually hear Ulan going to... <laughs> like... You hear him, like, he's not sliding. He's over there somewhere in the dark. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, uh, try to find Ong come out. You find him wedged uh, under, like, I mentioned parts of the ceiling come low. He is, like, in one of those sections. Uh, wedged hard on like he's got his bedroll underneath him the shield is off to the side it slid down a little way and he is like stuck underneath like stuck between the floor and the ceiling um uh you can attempt to escape ulan with a athletics check or if you have anything else you'd want to try it's also dark you can't see Alpha has some oil that he can he like pour it onto Ulan so it just slip easier. You could. Um, uh, and Malfa will kind of help Ulan. Yeah. Okay, you hear Malthar come up, uh, and then you feel wet on you. What would you like to do? You still can't see. I'd like to, um, well, I don't, I mean, I, I saw what the terrain looked like around me before. Yeah, so I need to see you, you know what it looks like before, but you can't <laughs> see, you're not can feel that you're pinned under the rock, but like you got very disoriented tumbling off of your, you're really not sure exactly where you are, or what the surroundings are. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll use produce flame just to like see what's happening. Okay. Roll a, roll a D20. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How flammable is this? It's lantern fuel, right? Yeah. So you rolled over, over, over an 11, or uh, over a 10. Um, so you, you light the flame and, and, and 
Malthar, you notice that he's doing that and can stop pouring oil. Uh, and you're, you have to, like, you can see, like, the rock is like this over your face, and your hand is, like, you can produce the flame up here. And kind of see, can kind of look this way up to where Malthar is. Malthar, you had to, like, get on onto the grounds to get to where he is. And so you had to crawl a little bit down to where he is. And so you've got the fire up here, and you can see now that you are you are you are wedged with the rock like up against your face here. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to try to slide out. Okay. It's going to be a DC sixteen. Do I? You I can't move. No. Well. No. Uh. Uh, not for this one, maybe the next one, but uh, you can't move, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. All right. All right. <laughs> so... <clears throat> right. You only take one sanity loss. Um, uh, and uh, Malthar, what are you doing? Uh, well, uh, Malthar is going to see Oolong do that. Produce. Be like, no, no, no. Do that. Malthar uh, will... Uh, take a candle. Set it. Okay. Yeah, you can set up a candle in a safe place. Yeah. Um, and Malthar? Ooh. And Malthar... Cut out again. Try to hug Ulan out from... Yeah. Would you like to make your own check, or do you want to give Ulan advantage? Uh... I'll, I'll give Oolong a... Alright, if you want to try to escape again, you have advantage. Alright. Um. Um. Oh, with advantage though, 23. So you can pull yourself free. Um, your bedroll is shredded. You can recover it, um, but it's gonna it's gonna like have holes in it, and it's it might need some repairs if you have a needle and thread. You have to you have to figure that out uh, later. Um, you slide down and find your shield. It's cracked in half. Um, later on, I'll probably feel guilty for making any of these recommendations and help out <laughs> with the repair. Well. If I think possible. you, you and Jeb, I think are going to regain an automatic one sanity, just for like finding like a really oh, fun, like feeling cool. yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like a fun stupid thing that you that you did that like worked out great. Okay. Uh, I'll just iterate that right now. The, the the you know if there's ever a, a little you know what forget the sanity thing you don't regain any sanity i keep meaning to do this more i'm going to give you just just um just nidabi inspiration gotcha. so you can mark inspiration on your sheet all right this was your idea you followed through on it i'm um, still going to help keep meaning i keep meaning to do inspiration i'm still going to help Ulan repair his stuff just because Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think Ulan and uh, uh, Malthar, are, you're both at one success, I think. Is that true, or did Ulan get two? I can't remember if I got one or two. And it's really complicated because I forgot to switch back between Robert and... <laughs> okay, well, we'll say oh. you're both at one success for the skill challenge. Uh, what are you both going to do? Uh, to, to continue down. 
Uh, um, well, I'm not going to keep sliding down because I can't. <laughs> so I will just uh, slowly make my way down. All right. Um, that could be a, a stealth check or a um, athletics. Uh, well, no, you already did athletics, right? I think you failed though, so you could do athletics. Again. Fail athletics every time I try athletics. Yeah. Okay. It'll be a little. Yeah. It'll be a little easier. Okay. Um, right. Mouth are. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I accidentally rolled twice there because it didn't load. Sure. Up, it was twenties. They're both twenties. <laughs> Uh, Malthar, what are you doing? Good. Uh, Malthar will try to use survival to uh, try to gauge which rock is slippery. Yep. Hazard. That definitely works. On the edgy. I'd say the DC is down to 10 because you're working together and slowly. Um, down at the bottom, though, uh, I, I, you you reach the bottom, uh, and you can distantly hear rushing water, um, uh, but you're in the tunnel that has leveled out a bit, uh, and you stand up and start gathering up your bedroll. Um, uh, you see, uh, uh, you hear the wheelbarrow, <laughs> like yeah. start to squeak down, mm -hmm. uh, and you see it like swerving a little bit, mm -hmm. it's going really fast. Uh, and you hear Robert like muttering, like talking to the cave leech. Like, no, 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 not yet. And then you see the, uh, you see like this pink mass just <laughs> out the mm -hmm. back. <laughs> and, and like Robert falling onto the cave leech's arms as it's, as it's like gooey pink body spreads out like a parachute oh, wow. and they come to a stop cool down to where you are cool okay he's covered in like little scratches where the cave leech bit him mm -hmm. so we're trying to figure out how to do that <laughs> um but you wait down there a while and you haven't the other two haven't gotten there yet um one more check if you succeed or you too, what do you want to do? Um, I am thinking a perception check to mm -hmm. kind of like see the best uh, footing position as I'm going down. All right. You're going to need a, I haven't looked at it yet. You're going to need a light source or you're going to have disadvantage. Uh, oh, you have produced one. We, are, we talked about that. That's your light source. Yeah. Now that you're not pinned, you can just sort of not catch yourself on fire. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 24. Malthar, what are you doing? You've already done perception. Um, maybe add it to. Yeah. Put his feet in the right clip. Yeah, all. it definitely works. Wow. Absolutely. So, so to working together, you're able to like at, at certain times you're kind of scrambling down with your hands like on the ceiling, but you're like standing on your feet with like your knees bent, and you're kind of working down that way. Sometimes it gets a little too low, and you have to lie down and turn around and kind of climb down on your belly, like looking down behind you. But uh, you figure out ways to do that without slipping or getting pinned again. And uh, um, you do knock a couple rocks loose, but they tumble down. You know, none, none of you like hit each other with rocks. Um, and uh, eventually, you two at the bottom see them uh, starting to, to approach, and you gather up at the bottom of the rift. Cool. Tunnel is leveled out now. No more checks to, to, to pass through the tunnel. And like I said, you can faintly hear uh, rushing water. Is the ceiling still really low? 
ceiling um, is very uneven, but it's mostly high enough that you can walk. Okay. You also, I think this tunnel is faintly illuminated. You were a little busy to notice, but I think two that were climbing down started to notice little patches of lichen on the rock that had a faint glow to them. Um, and the tunnel down here is faintly lit by luminescent lichen. Nice. Um, you want to take a break? Yes. Is there anything moving? Anything moving? Um, not right here. Maybe a um, 20 minute break? That works for me. All right. So back at 9 p.m. See ya. All right.
day now. So if we got ten minutes, let me see if I can find the cat. Or okay. Her. Yes, please do. No, he's curled up. No, oh, okay. Heidi. I will. Let's see. Come here. Come here. Mine isn't. Diego. I just started playing around because I know last session um, Manny was saying that Ian made this background on Roll20 out of the AI artwork generator. <clears throat> and I was like, ooh, I've played around with that a little bit. So I just decided to try a couple of prompts of my own and I came up with some really cool stuff just now. Did you get some good stuff? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Pop over to DMs and send them to me. Yeah. 
here's the latest one. Here's another one. Yeah. Here's a cool one. And then the third one that I really, really like. None of them are claustrophobic feeling enough for what we're doing right now. But I'm like I don't I don't mind. It's so far it's kinda of working. Sorry, everyone came back on time. <laughs> oh, good. Your second long rest. That's where we'll start. Will be a perception check from someone? Is it going to be? Uh, a long rest? Before we do the long rest, does anyone hurt? I have spell slots. May as well use them for healing. Yeah, that's true. Uh... It looks like Roper might be down a, quite a bit. How much damage do yeah, you Roper, take, though? I think Ulan's the most hurt. Okay, I think... Yeah, it seems stupid to do this right before a long rest, but I'm going to use one of my wild shapes. So I can do the chalice starry Nidari and Malthar, you were both not hurt at all, right? I was a little yeah. bit. I'm yeah. down like... Yeah, I was down like 7, that's it. Out of 45 total. I'm messing with the bot right now. Okay, well, that's five hit points back for you. So what happened when I pressed stop? Did it break and you had to fix it? Or if I press stop and then play, is it going to work again? I don't I'm going to have to do something. I don't know. Um, okay, I'll do... Um, maybe I'll pause. Does pause work? Yeah, but I'm going to... I'll try pause. But I want to want it to play. Because I think uh, stop kicked it out. And then you had to re-cue the whole thing. Um... Try play next and then add a playlist. Oops, I didn't. That's too I voted to skip a song. <laughs> Shouldn't matter. 
Can you do skip? I don't. Surely, if you do it, it just skips. It's not going to need. Oh gosh. Oh, I also have uh, five good berries that are going to expire anyways, because it's been roughly 24 hours, and those are one hit point each. Skip two. Right. Um, Did I screw it up? Sorry. Oh. No, this is fine. Alright. Although, uh, no, I want to figure out. You didn't screw it up exactly, but... I skipped two, not... What did you have to do to get it working again after I did stop earlier? I just re... I just redid your command of play the playlist. Play playlist. Oh, okay. So and I'll, it just re-added it. So I'll, do, yeah. I'll do stop. And I'll do... Play... Hey, there it is. Okay. Nice. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. Um, who's doing the perception check? I can. That's the, the best perception. I only have three plus three perception. Oh, I have plus six. Um, the distant river is very soothing, but a little, a little eerie. The, the way that it, it doesn't sound like a river above ground. There's, it's somewhere between, like. There's like a, almost a rumble to it, um, the way that it forces air uh, around. Um, it's not, it doesn't sound like plumbing, but it's kind of like if you imagine the sound of like when a, when a, when a sink rattles from water rushing through it, but if that was happening through piles of stone. There's there's just a, a low echoing rumble from the, the system of rivers, um, but nothing passes through in your tunnel that you notice while you're resting. No random encounters. Any downtime activities? Um, anytime you want to study the book, uh, I can have you do some kind of check on it. Um, but those are limited to like one per rest, basically. I'm not going to look at the book this time around, only because I don't have a light source. And right. I've got eye drops, but I'm not gonna. Uh, do you want Roper to craft anything out of rope? He can turn a length of rope into a net or a harpoon if you also give him a spear or a lasso. I mean, lasso is easy. He can do that. He can do that like as an action. Anything more complex, though, if it's like a net, can easily craft that during a downtime. Is my damaged bedroll affect my? Oh. Um, make a Constitution check. Okay. Like a, is that a saving throw? Mm, yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> now make a wisdom saving. Okay, so you don't lose any sanity, but you uh, it, it's pretty uncomfortable, and you're gonna want to get it fixed. Um, maybe Robert can help with that. But uh, 
Malta actually didn't. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. With bedroll. Oh right, Malthar doesn't even have a bedroll. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think you need to make. You need to make a, a constitution as well. Um. Okay, so you're fine tonight, but. <clears throat> Yeah, you, you definitely want something down here. I mean, it depends on where you're resting, but this is a slightly damp, very cold, mostly stone ground with like some kind of um, silty earth. Uh, it's not even soil. Like there's, it's almost like so much dust that it forms a kind of heavy, silty soil. Um, <clears throat> Uh, is there like plants? Is there like grass or anything? No grass. Um, but I think, um, yeah, why don't I uh, make a uh, nature check? Uh, Ulan. Wow. You have seen this kind of lichen before. Uh, there was lots of it in Bellic's, um arboretums uh, growing down there. Um, occasionally it appears in, in deep caves on the surface. Um, it's pretty common. Um, but you're like looking and you're, you're like running your fingers through the, the silt on the ground. Um, trying to like find you know, what kind of life is down here. It doesn't seem like there's much yet. Okay, so my idea was <clears throat> Can I, with my ability to kind of communicate to plants and animals, can I convince it to form into a bed? Ooh, not not this stuff, not here. There's not enough of it. But if you come to a place where the ground is like more alive, then that's definitely possible. You've done it before in the like above ground. Plus, I just um, watched a documentary that they claim fungus is neither plant nor animal, but something completely different. So I'm not allowed to talk to the fungus? Because <laughs> I don't it's know. Not, <laughs> you can talk to plants and animals, so I'll, I'll, I'll put the fungus in there, too. Somewhere. Somewhere in there. Uh, You do find a, a little, like, a pill bug. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot right here. Um, but you're getting closer to the river, you know, like above ground at least, rivers are pretty popular. Hmm. Right? Back up your stuff. You, uh, oh, right, so your armor is super scuffed, like, all up the front of it. Um, uh, any like designs or anything that are on the, the chest portion of it are just like fully scraped off. It's got like, you know, white uh, uh, scuff marks uh, on it, but it's functional still. It needs some, um, if, if it's ever going to like look nice again, it's going to need a professional to work on it. You also got a, if your picture is at all accurate, you've also got like a, a cloak and everything. So you, you don't look crazy. It's just the, the, the chest plate part of it is really, really scuffed up. <clears throat> um, heading further down the tunnel, you eventually come to the river's edge. Um, it's uh, pretty wild looking at it, uh, holding a torch up over the edge. The um, the riverbed is very uneven. It's it's stone, like so. 
the tunnel seems to have been carved by the river partly and it it it, it um the ceiling is extremely uneven um there's stalactites uh hanging down there's patches of that uh glowing lichen all over the place um so this whole area is lit by dim light um which means that people with dark vision are no longer at disadvantage. Um, the edge where you can walk, like I said, is pretty uneven. It's very smooth and it's shiny uh, with uh, moisture. Um, and it, it's a steep drop off. My camera's up. It's a steep drop off down to the river, which is carved deeper and deeper and deeper as it flows. So like the cliff at the edge of the riverbed has just gotten deeper and deeper, steeper over time. Um, So you would, if you were to fall in the river, you'd fall a couple, like good five to 10 feet. It varies wildly. Like at some, some parts it's much higher than others. Um, Everyone can make a survival check to sort of study the river. Sure. Malthar, you um, remember some wisdom about uh, rivers that um, many of the most dangerous rivers aren't the ones that like, aren't the like, you know, white rapids that are, that are loud and, and terrifying, the ones that like crash against the sides and kick up a bunch of, it's the, it's the quiet ones, the ones that are deep and quiet and uh faster than they look this this water is pretty smooth like the surface of the water is smooth but whenever you see something in it when you see like a pebble if you kick it off the edge uh the river is pretty fast the edges are smooth so this is a death trap like this river is much faster than it looks and um like i said the edges of the river are steep and smooth and the the water is black you can't tell how deep it is are there any spots we can actually get down to the edge of it yeah there's 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 uh definitely spots you can get down to the edge can shimmy down to one of those spots i'd like to try to test the depth with my this uh my spear um, what kind of check? This is a check. Mm-hmm. You do nature survival, or even I almost just do perception and call it. Okay. Yes. Stick it down, and if you haven't touched the bottom of it yet. You can kind of touch the side. And it still goes down, mm-hmm. but if you were to reach any farther, it would be kind of dangerous. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. It is deep, deep, deep. It's not. <laughs> Scramble my. It seems like. Uh, Roper mentions that there were portions of the river that they did ford, so it gets shallower in places. Um, and like it gets wider. And sometimes if it's wide enough, it's slow, it's like slow enough that it be safe um it's it's all over the place sometimes it's very thin and that's those are like really dangerous parts um sometimes it's wider and shallower um sometimes it's steeper sometimes it's not uh he also is kind of compulsively looking at the ceiling every once in a while Um, Does it look about the same height uh, as when you came down? It's about, um, 
doesn't seem to have changed that much, but there's a lot of river. This was this was the portion of the journey that took the longest. Um, was navigating the rivers, so uh -huh. well, it's going to be hard to recall any specific places. <laughs> you're a rope expert. Any chance you can rope us over? Like, just definitely. We we did that uh, in at. Uh, uh, multiple places had to construct a rope bridge because um, it was too deep to ford, but we had to cross. Um, it always took a while um, because, you know, we had to get everyone and everything across. Um, we had to get people to the other side of the river to secure the ropes and uh, in two places and then um, create kind of a net across it that you could climb over. Um, but it, it can be done. We don't have enough rope to do that, <laughs> but we've definitely got enough rope to get us across in certain places. It will always be a, it'll always be slower than if we can figure something else out, but, but it, it, it some, sometimes we might have to do that. So, uh, um, does the river take up the entirety of the tunnel at points, or is it like there's uh, some there's some uh, I'm not sure what to call it because I, I keep calling it the river bed, but it's not a river bed. It's it's like a it, there there is like some ground that you can walk around the edges. Um, right now. There's not much on the other side of the river that you can see that, that, that is walkable. Um, right now it's kind of just this side, but farther ahead, you can see it, it shifts a little bit to where there's room on both sides. Um, sometimes there's more space, sometimes there's less. Uh, sometimes there's multiple levels. And you can see other tunnels branching off of this river um, that connect to the river. This is a complex system of caverns now. You're out of the area where it's kind of just one path. Um, the pooling caves weren't one path either, but you got through those pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot of different paths now, but at the very least, you know that you're going downstream, which is easier than going upstream. So if you're going upstream, the river is going to keep splitting. Going downstream, it's usually going to come together. So that's a little easier. Um, and despite this river being very dangerous, it's not impossible to, to go by water. They didn't because they were going upstream and the river, you know, most of the time was a little too fast for them. That is an option. It would definitely be the fastest way down. Admittedly, I did have that idea, but I don't know if we have anything that floats, except for a wooden I'll wheelbarrow. Have, you have a wheelbarrow. You have a wheelbarrow. You have... No, no, don't take my wheelbarrow. Well, that's the other thing. Cave leech is, I mean, this cave leech is a faster swimmer than it is a walker. By, by water could be a legitimate option. Um, regardless of how you go, um, this is going to be another skill challenge, but a group skill challenge. Okay. Um, for each day of travel, uh, it's going to be Oh, no, I didn't decide if I wanted to do it per day or if I wanted to do it all at once. Yeah, per day, it's going to be three skill checks. Um, and like before, failure results in some kind of encounter. Um, often that'll be just sort of failing at whatever you're attempting disastrously or something else. So... And that's and that's for like if we have to cross the river. Um, 
that's going to be you're gonna you're going this is like over the course of a, of a day's travel you're gonna pick a skill and attempt that and you know you're you, you're probably gonna have to cross the river at some point so one of your skills can be how would you like to try and cross the river why well, shape water yes which works on rivers <laughs> yeah most rivers. I mean, there's, so, there's like there's a lot of rivers. I mean, how how wide is the river? Um, at different places, it's it's uh, different. I, th I think at its widest today, the widest that that it gets would be like twenty feet. Um, at its narrowest, like sometimes it comes together to be like five feet. But at that point, it's like once you get to that width. The water is like kicking up in the air, just the it's going so fast uh, through that bottleneck, um, and that's usually before like a drop. Um, uh, it just rips through the bottlenecks. Um, so I can, I can freeze five feet of it at a time, up to five feet of it at a time. Mm -hmm. And I can have, that lasts an hour, and then I can have two of those effects active at a time. So I could, if, if anyone really wanted to, move five feet at a time, where you stand on the square, I make the next oh. one move onto that square, the old one disappears, the new Only one. Only problem and is... So I can just keep doing that for forever. The river's moving. Right. So it'll So if you Right. But you know, if you're trying to make a raft then we can have a ice could be a component. We could have a I'll say you you raft. You will have to cross the river at certain sections just to get to sides of the river where you can stand. But your goal isn't to get to the other side of the river, it's to get to the bottom of the river. Right. Roper remembers that the river empties out into a worm tunnel. Um, I like the ice raft idea. I really like it. I'm not done sledding. Gonna be it's gonna be three skill skill checks regardless. But if you're going by water, you can you know shave at least a day off of the journey uh, if it's successful. The checks are gonna be harder because by water is more dangerous, but you'll have to do less checks probably because you'll get there faster. So what's it gonna be? Um, what's our, like, visibility like? Um, um, the air is very moist in here, and there's lots of, um, there's lots of, uh, luminescent, uh, lichen on the walls and the ceiling, so the whole area is, is dimly lit. Uh, anyone with dark vision can see bright light, anyone without dark vision sees, sees in dim light. Um... If you have a light source, then you're 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 perfect. The eye drops would have worn off by now. Yeah, but probably, it's once per day. It's probably been eight hours, but <clears throat> it hasn't been a full day yet, has it? Since we when are you applying it? Are you applying it at the end of a long rest? No. I mean, I didn't actually explicitly say I applied it at all. Ooh. So I probably wouldn't have up until now. Um, I think the intention with this once per day dark vision is that for the majority of your working day, you have dark vision active mm -hmm. if you're in possession of this item. Um, yeah, there's a couple hours before you go to bed or after you wake up where you don't have it, but um, we don't need to worry about that right now. 
We'll say you have it active. All right. So just Ulan, and Ulan can light up his hand as a cantrip action, so. Yeah, so it seems like we can probably kind of try to raft down. <clears throat> And then whenever the river gets narrow and speeds up too much, we'll see that coming and we can walk on just that section. You're starting up by day one, you're gonna take a, you're gonna make a raft. Yeah, so I have a few questions though before I yes. commit to the shape water idea. When I'm making ice and I choose the texture of the ice yes okay so i can make it you can also shape the water and freeze it as you right so i can make it not slippery or i can at least minimize how slippery it is yeah you can make it you can like make it textured you can make it have like lots of spikes <laughs> right <laughs> which is also not great but it's better um yeah it you make it kind of gravelly have it yeah it seems better to have it and if it's like, if it's spike like you can make it gravelly, but a case for spikes, even if they're like flat on the top, a case for like having little like lots of little like a bed of nails, um, is that when it as it melts, it'll melt in reservoirs, and you won't be standing on the melted bit. That won't right. last for too long, but it might stay. I feel like gravelly texture is going to be better at first, but eventually it's going to get slippery faster than a bed of nails. Right. And so how... And you can lay, you can lay your bed rolls on top of it, which is they're going to be wet and cold. Very wet, yeah. <laughs> how does it work to, like, to, like, keep the spell going? Because it, so it, anything that I do lasts an hour, but it's a cantrip, so I can theoretically do it every six seconds. Yeah, so does that, does I think you can just. That, or can I just keep? Yeah, like I think if you're focusing on it, and it's not, you know, it's not concentration, right? It's just, right. At some point in the hour, you kind of re up. So I think you're just doing constant maintenance on it. Okay. Over the course of an hour, you'll like maybe notice that like, oh, it's getting a little melty. <laughs> Fix that. Um, Oh, yeah. So if you're doing that, you don't really even have to worry about... You still might want to have a little bit of verticality on the gravel so that as it melts, it doesn't immediately soak into your bedroll. But, um... Uh... Yeah. That'll work. And, um... How is the... How is the... Because I think you're going to have to incorporate the wheelbarrow into this design somehow or else you're just going to have to have the wheelbarrow on the raft with you so can you can you describe to me the design like the layout of this raft yeah so that's my final question <clears throat> how much freedom do i have in like shaping it and like the area of it like it says well, what, what is it it's for the five area? foot cube mm -hmm. but i'm gonna say you can do five, five two five foot cubes but they don't necessarily have to be cubes, just the, the, the area of two five foot cubes, basically two people. Um, uncomfortably, four people. And then, right, okay. depending on how you incorporate the wheelbarrow, that could provide enough to, to also include the cave beach. Okay. So. If, if I'm allowed to, like, kind of, like, stretch the five-foot cube, if that makes sense, then we can basically just make a boat shape. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. We could just we have make a, boat, a, like, a long canoe. Is, like, the back section of the, of the boat. Oh, yeah. So, it's like, um, like, um, yeah, like, like, canoe shape with a, with a thing in the middle towards the back. Yeah. There's both, there's both like that. Yeah. Absolutely. You make a beautiful uh, uh, kind of frosty white semi-transparent boat with a wheelbarrow for a um, not a crow's nest, but like kind of just a cubicle towards the back. 
um, is like pointy in the front, flat on the back. Yeah. Shape. Awesome. Do you have any way of controlling this boat? So I have a quarter staff. Mm -hmm. Which that'll, that'll we help. can use to, I don't know, like push ourselves around. I don't think I have anything that's or like inherently. We, we have, but I we do have, have two we... halves of a broken shield that we can tie on to the end of the quarter staff to make an oar. Or if somebody R has spears, we can. If you didn't have Rupert with you, that would be a difficult check, but Rupert can do it as an action and, in, okay. it, it, and it will pulse together pretty well. Um. You've got like he ties it in a way that it's like he doesn't tie it like this. He ties it like this at like a right angle. So you, so the two halves of the, the 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 two halves of the shield are laid against each other like this. So you've got like a a a, a um um yeah like a like a right angle kind of scoop or okay. so you can so you can depending on its orientation. The river, you know, you you can have the. Um, there's no flat side of it, but uh, the, you you want the um, the river to be flowing against the uh, this this uh, this side, not this side. Um, I think Rupert also has a a staff. No, it looks like he doesn't. No. Does he the cape and swim? Yes. It's a good swimmer. It's got a um, angle the cape leech the flat end of canoe and swim forward. To like push you or I don't think it's that strong of a swimmer, but it could definitely help you um, control your movement a little if if uh, Roper is able to convince the cave leech to do that well. Can I also? You can help. You can give him advantage. How about this is the first check oh, of sure, the three, okay. three, three checks of the day. You you kick off into the into the river boat starts moving pretty quickly a lot of your quarter staff stuff is is like you'll start drifting towards the edge pretty quickly and you'll just have to kind of push away a little bit you're managing your speed a lot with this quarter staff um trying to like stop the boat from moving rather than get it moving um so it's a little more stressful than most um what do you what is a canoe polling like whatever you call that mm -hmm. um but uh, uh if you want to help roper you're gonna have to hand off that that uh the war the to someone else so how does it how do the group checks work like if i'm helping robert he gets advantage on it but that's still counts yeah but him. you uh, mm, this is a special case because you've got a you're a druid i think a druid should be able to help on it um no yeah, yeah it's a good point it's a skill challenge i don't think you're able to help on, on, on this i think i think robert's on his own uh, so this is the first. This is the first check. It's Robert making an animal handling check to get the cave leech to cooperate, and the cave leech does. Um, he lowers the cave leech into the water, um, and it already like kind of hangs out at the back of the boat because the the current is like helps like keep the cave leech there um it's like easy to ride in the wake of, of the canoe um 
It's not a canoe. I don't know. Maybe it's a canoe. What's what different kinds of boats are called? Your boat. Um, uh, but over like an hour of, of travel, he kind of coaxes the leech to, towards the side of the boat and shows it to like push the boat in different directions. And you can even like kind of talk to it in a very simple way. Um, uh, and help him like convey verbally some of the things that he's trying to to tell it. He has a very similar skill to, to you, where he's able to communicate simple ideas to to, to animals. Um, and uh, yeah, it's able to help um, help the boat navigate. So that's your first of three successes. Um, How about somebody do a somebody other than Ulan needs to make a perception check uh, while we're traveling? Okay, I will do that. All right, while well, that is making a perception check. And I don't see a thing. Oh. While you're coasting along, things have been going very smoothly. Um, there was a portion where the river got kind of narrow, uh, and you were like holding the oar against something, against something else, and like approaching the bottleneck very slowly. Um, and then once you got there, you kind of got pushed through, and it was a little bumpy, but you emerged on the other side. Uh, and everyone kind of like oh, celebrated a little bit, and then out of fucking nowhere, Nidotti shouts as something slimy grabs his shoulder <laughs> and digs something sharp digs into your chest, and you lift up off of the boat. Mm-hmm. Um, um. Yeah. Make a. Make a contested grapple check here. Okay. Strength for me. Strength or dexterity. Yeah. Athletics. It's specifically athletics or acrobatics. Ooh. So yeah, you lift up off the ground, but then you are able to pull yourself free. And with a natural 20, you can choose whether you want to drop back down onto the boat or hold on to the neck of this cave leech that has that had a hold of you. Yeah, I'm going down to the boat again. All right. <laughs> um. So. Do the rest of us see this happening? Yes. Um, and it's like immediately a, a whole commotion, like he lifts off the boat for a second and everyone like tries to do something and then he drops back down as the cave leech like continues to reach for the boat as it passes. What were you going to do? I was just going to like prepare to like catch him and make sure he didn't like slip as he lands. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now do they make a dexterity saving throw with advantage when landing back on the boat? Um, 18, you're perfectly fine. Uh, the cave leech, like, continues to reach for you as you pass. Just kind of gives up. And slinks back up to the ceiling. Okay. This was a fully grown, another fully grown cave leech. Um, somebody else can cover the next perception check. Now you keep a constant watch on the ceiling. Um, and you're also looking down into the water and at a certain point you see something. You, you, you see the, the, the cave leech that um, Roper uh, has. Um, 
but you also see a couple smaller pink things, like little tadpoles, uh, swim upriver. See a couple juvenile leeches. Um, and watching the river, you see also what look like pale gray fish of some kind swimming in a way that like, you know, they're, they're not going up or down river. They're just kind of treading water, staying in place. See a small school of them that you pass over. Um, there are things that live in this, in this, uh, river, um, That's uh, two successes. What's the third one going to be? Oh, totally forgot to give you damage. You know, you rolled a natural 20 to escape. Mm -hmm. You rolled two natural ones to get attacked. So <laughs> let me roll the cape leech uh, grab attack. Yeah, 10 piercing damage from that attack. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what's the next check going to be? It can't be animal handling or perception. Dang, I was going to say animal handling so we can convince the cave leech to call off the others. <laughs> I guess just the straight survival check, just for... Okay, just to navigate the river. Yeah, Ulan definitely should make that check. God damn. <laughs> One. So I get advantage because Nidot is also doing a survival check? Nidot is doing a survival check? It's no, I mean, I doubt he's helping me. Do I get it vanished? Yeah. Take a second. You are navigating the river, and you're focusing on that, and between that and doing the, uh, you know, managing the movement of the boat, you wait a little too long to re-up the control of water. Obviously, the whole thing doesn't melt, you would notice, before that happened. But just enough melt between the two sections of the spell it melts around the edges, and both edges converge in the center. And for a moment, the boat splits in half. Uh, no one's expecting that. Um, and everyone needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Not a difficult one, but the stakes are very high here. Uh, the cave leech doesn't, obviously. And one for Robert. Okay. So everyone succeeds. Everyone holds on. The boat splits. Um, no one falls off. Um, it's... Uh, uh, Nidati and oh, the, the it's gonna it's gonna be Nidati and Ulan in the front, Malthar and Jeb in the back, I think. Um, but you're in these two sections of the boat that are now like full of water and kind of half 
floating. What do you do, all of you? Be close enough to still be able to reach each other. Yes. Okay, then I think I just reach out to whoever's closest on the other half of the boat. Mm -hmm. I try to just kind of pull the two halves back together. All right, if you and someone else, you and um, Malthar, uh, make strength checks. And you'll kind of cover each other here. You don't both need to succeed, but you need to not both fail. Well, All right, so yes, you together can kind of pull it together and hold it together enough where like the two halves are mostly touching. They're not perfectly aligned. Uh, you can, tr if you want to perfectly align them, you can make another check, or you can repair them as they are now, and the boat will be compromised. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, uh, I think just repair it now. All right. And then we can, um, as the river slows, we can get to a bank and properly repair it. Yeah, you you pull the boat together and and heal it. It's um, slightly <laughs> misaligned. There's at the bottom, it's together, um, but then towards the edges, the two halves are are off a little bit, and so water splashes up between those halves, and you're constantly having to push it back out. It you're immediately all soaked, you know, from the initial. Uh, Boat breaking in half, and you 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 are going to get dry while you're in this boat. Mm. Um, uh, and you know, as soon as the water hits the ice, the ice gets slippery again. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to fall out, but it's just freezing cold uh, and very very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, uh, after a while, the river widens out enough that there's you can see a stone bank that comes down to the side that is is probably going to be your best bet to pull off to the side if you want to um or you can continue down the river and look for a better place uh, this one's going to be a, a little challenging to get out uh it'll definitely be a check from everyone to to climb out Uh, and or I think not for everyone to climb out, but um, now it will be an easy check, a DC 10 uh, athletics or acrobatics to climb out for each each person. Um, and then uh, working together, I think you can haul the boat up once you're all up, out without a check. Uh, so you can do that now or you can carry on the river in this messed up boat and look for a better a uh, better place to moor. And I see down the river to see if there's like, like in the immediate future, if there's another like narrow part where it'll be fast. Um, no, not in the immediate future. It's just uh, the edges get kind of high again. Um, okay. Then I think we get... could probably wait for a better place. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. let's keep going. Yeah. All right. I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw in this freezing cold, soaking wet boat. Ulan, you take a level of exhaustion. Make a oh, wisdom boy. saving throw. Okay. No sanity loss. You have one level of exhaustion. Yeah, how do I keep track of that? Um, I have a counter on my on my sheet. Yeah, there's there's a thing. I'll I'll turn it on. Um, if I can find it. There it is. You should have a counter now under your, under your hit dice. Oh, 
Oh, and um, Jeb is also going to take a level of exhaustion. Roper. Um, and I'm going to roll a wisdom save for Roper. That's what's funny. He's good. Oh, we didn't add his... He's not proficient in any saving throws. I don't remember what they are, so I'm not going to do that right now. If he fails a saving throw later, I'll look up which proficiencies he has. Um, all right. You uh, continue down the river for about two more hours um, before it levels out enough. Um, and overhead, uh, before you reach this area, uh, overhead the ceiling gets like really high and you get this really lovely view of stalactites. Um, among sort of like a forest of uh blue and green uh lichen um nothing's growing on the stalactites so they're they're just these black uh pillars among the the lichen um and roper remembers that and says we forded the river up ahead not not far um, and sure enough, it gets shallower, um, and there's a very steady slope up to the edges where you can moor your boat, um, without any, without any checks necessarily. And now you guys are literally, but also just, you're all, uh, exhausted, um, uh, from, from that journey. Um, you can, you can easily... Like, once you get everyone off, you don't really have to fully moor the boat. You just moor it enough where you can just melt the water and recover the wheelbarrow. Um, there's a lot of, of riverbank now. Um, and there's, like, it's kind of a pebble beach in this area that, that you've pulled up to. The ceiling is really high. Um, it's pretty dark where you're at right now because the, the, the lichen, like the walls are pretty far away from you now and there's not a lot of lichen on the ground, but as the river shifts and the waves kind of come up against the pebbles, there's a faint glow down where the pebbles are. There's, there's like tiny little organisms living among the pebbles cool. that light up a little bit as the water like rushes by them. Um, Um, there's, uh, like I said, there's a, a generous bank now. You can get up to an area that's, uh, relatively dry. Um, and, uh, uh, the ground here has a, uh, very thin coating of, like, it's not a coating, but, like, poking up through some of the stone up here where it's a little drier. There's that um, uh, pale, purpley, kind of heather-like plant stuff that um, is growing in the cave leech room up in the citadel. Um, so you could try and... Uh, you don't even have to try. I think you um, are able to commune with this plant life a little bit and make slightly more comfortable beds. Not quite beds, but they just sort of spread out a little bit. You... Uh, can sprinkle a little bit. If you have spare good berries, you can kind of crush that up and rub it on it and, and give it the energy to grow and it's happy to, to grow in a way that makes it more comfortable for you guys to sleep now that you've given it some free food. Um, and yeah, you make like very thin pads 
that you're able to to sleep on, but it means you don't have to use your your awful wet uh, bedrolls today. Um. Uh, mouth hours. Out again at just the just the wrong time. Were you saying long rest? Is that what you're saying? Malthar was. <laughs> Sorry, Cut out the exactly. Malthar wants a long rest so bad he just falls asleep right there. So, um, Roper tells you that you've made good, we've made good time today. Like, um, this is like halfway down the river, basically, which took them like, you know, more than half of a month to, to make their way up the river. Um, that part of that is because they had to backtrack, uh, but, um, you know, the actual length that they, you know, from point A to point B, uh, you've gone half that way. So if you make the same time tomorrow, you should get to the base of the river by the end of the, the travel day. If you go by water again. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I'm also getting cool physics ideas. Like if you were to put a gigantic oblong water wheel, could we ride the top of the wheel back up? The like a like a I don't know. I'm still thinking. I, that. You mean like like running on top of it? No, like a just sort of like a moving walkway in an in an in an, in an airport, except the bottom of this moving walkway is driven by oh, little and it would, rudders or fans or whatever. You you're gonna have to draw this. You're yeah, I know. Do like I a know. Da, a Da Vinci sketch. Yeah, I can I can picture it. Okay. Head. I'm just gonna have to. Speaking of speaking of maniacal sketches, um, uh, are there any like downtime activity? I was referring to the the notebook that you were. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Alex made a face. Oh, no, I made a face at something that was happening outside. Okay. <laughs> I guess you guys can't hear. Could you guys hear any of the sirens and stuff that went by? No. No. That's good. It's very loud here. Hmm. Uh, maybe downtime activities? Yeah, checking out the notebook. I mean, I don't know what more I can do other than just. Yeah, what are you, what are you, what are you trying to do? Because you can't understand the writing. You could attempt to decode. There's lots of drawings. You could investigate those. Um, any anything specific that you'd like to do? I mean, specifically, what is a drawing that I would find in here, other than these runic symbols that I can't quite distinguish as abyssal? Um. Uh, hold on. Um. Like, is there a spe if I were to just open to a random page, is there a specific drawing that I would notice? I know it's kind of asking a lot, but I'm like, mm. no, 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 I'm, I'm thinking. No, um, you find several drawings, you find the, the drawings I described, those are the only drawings in the notebook. Okay. Um, and they are spread out pretty evenly throughout, uh, throughout the, no, you know what, they aren't. They're all later in, in the book. 
um, and they are always like in the top left corner okay. of, of, of of pages. Um, and it's those it's those specific drawings. It's the circle. It's the spidery legs. It's the um, the healer, and it's the Eiffel Tower. Got it. And the um, uh, the spider legs, the helix, and the Eiffel Tower have a notation um, um, uh, uh, on them uh, in that like fake uh, abyssal script. Um, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll have the same notation. But each one specifically has its own. Yeah. Okay. And is it one symbol circle, per page? Circle does not. Hmm? Is it one symbol per page? Or is it all four in like a little... No. Group? No. Um, there's more pages than there are drawings. Okay. And they're on different pages. Each drawing is on a different page. Mm -hmm. But they are one page after the other. Group, okay. group, groups together in that way. Okay. I think um, I understand it. And um, actually, the notation on the spider legs is different from the helix and the Eiffel Tower. Oh. That one's that one's different. Um. Make an Arcana check? Uh, sure. <clears throat> you also have the two other things you recovered from the body. I don't know who has all this stuff. But there's the, I think you, you have, do you have the uh, ball bearing, like the silver orb, yes. uh, holy symbol. Yes. Um, it's about this big um, and it's, it's shiny. Um, it has a little chain connected to the top of it. Um, and then there's a, uh, a mace that uh, it's not as shiny. It looks like a standard um, uh, ceremonial mace. It's a smooth round kind of ball. It's a little dented. Um, but uh, when you activate it, it extends and a little um, spikes pop out all around. Um, uh, and when you do that, it's not like a mechanical thing that's happening, but it's also not like, it's not like liquid or anything. It's not changing shape. It just kind of gets longer spikes kind of emerge from it. Hmm. And it's, like I said, there's no, it doesn't seem like there's a complex mechanical thing that's going on here. There aren't like little things that open. It's, it's just, it just kind of grows. Um, clearly a magical item. Um, uh, I don't know who has the morning star slash mace. It's a mace that turns into a morning star. I do. Ah, uh, there it is. Secretly spiced mace. Spiked. <laughs> I have a, a cobalt holy symbol that in parentheses just says a shardalon. Yes. I don't remember what that is. It's a holy symbol of a Shardalon, a uh, dragon. Ancient, ancient red dragon of legend. Okay. Lots of kobolds worship, including the So it's just like a symbol, it's not like a Yeah. I think I okay. vaguely remember describing it as a silver kind of little dragon with bright red little, little tiny ruby eyes. 
and it's like standing in a regal position with its wings spread out behind it. Um, yeah, nothing super special. Um, I also forgot I have notes from Belloc's study. Mm. Yeah. That I wanted to read. All right. Um, it, um, so what you've collected is a couple pages that he's taken from books and has annotated them or like underlined things. Um, and so looking through this, you can kind of see the, they don't have written up like notes that he's written, but uh, going through like the things that he was, was studying and took an interest in, you can kind of see the, like, see what he was looking at and what he was interested in. He was reading up on druidic and monastic, like, studies on um undeath and um you know uh, a lot of uh churches hunt the uh undead or you know the undead is generally uh, undeath is generally very taboo um but there's a lot of like gray area in certain academia where like some healing is is undead it, it is not undead but it's it's necromantic and so necromancy can't exactly be you know blanket bad so if you're gonna if you're gonna use undeath as an absolute evil that means you need to cut out a lot of things that society usually doesn't uh usually values uh, and so there's a lot of like very like safe um, kind of political kind of people m maneuvering around, like trying to categorize certain kinds of undeath separate from certain other kinds in a way that's convenient. And there's certain like fringe, uh, not fringe, but like there's philosophers that are very like aggressive about like what's, what's actually bad about undeath? What's actually bad about necromancy? Um, and that's like, there's so many terrible liches and, uh, necromancers in history and, and currently that like, nobody really wants to come out and say that. And Belek seemed to be very invested in like, you know, kind of, he wanted to use necromancy and study on death. Uh, he was a druid in an order that rejected all forms of necromancy, uh, even, um, even resurrection. The only resurrection spells that they were permitted to learn would be reincarnation, which does not restore the body. It finds a new body. Um, so he came from a even more, even more strict probably than your circle. Um, uh, yeah, and he, his conclusion, which he, he said to you, but also mentions in his notes, his conclusion was that he believed that undeath was not only a natural state of being, but that in the past, uh, and he finds some like very shaky evidence for this. There is a very, very, very old, um, he, 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 and maybe I'll write something up about that later, but he, um, believes that there was a time in the past where undeath was the, say, the way to, to, to be. And he thinks that, that, um, like death and rebirth is a, like, perversion of the natural order. He's he's discovered at least that he he believes that uh, undeath was at one point like the there wasn't a cycle of life there just was life and continued at life. 
and he saw the Gothay history as like um, a revival of that somehow. Uh, but a lot of the notes that he's recovered, which seem less, I think, I don't know how accepting of this idea Ulan would be, but a, a lot of the notes that you're reading are arguing that, like, is undeath actually bad? Like, fundamentally, what is the, like, what is the, um, harm in a death which immediately strikes your ears like that sounds fucking evil um uh, but that's the majority of what you're reading here in these notes um who's making a perception check for the long rest Well, I did the last one. Oh, did you? I can. Go ahead, my buddy. That's right. So far, no uh, random encounters. All right. Next day. Wake up, mm-hmm. gather your stuff. How are you gonna travel? By land or by boat? Is, is there enough, like, woody material in the book, Heather? Oh, I meant to respond to that because I saw it. I saw it typed up in the so, response. Sorry. Um, make a survival check. It would be pretty difficult. There's not a lot uh, that's like long enough or, or, or strong. Can I coax any plants into becoming long enough and straight enough to be an arrow? You can do that and give give Malthar advantage. Funny. You're able to find um three of these like heather stalks that are long enough straight enough not quite strong enough um but uh ulan can like coax them to kind of reinforce themselves um and then you cruelly break them off right after they're done (laughs) but ulan can like Smooth them out afterwards a little bit. You like, sorry. I can make them some happens happen all the time. Um, um, but you can, you can, uh, you have the wooden materials to make three arrows. You're also going to need the arrowheads, and you don't necessarily need feathers, it helps have any of those though so you might have to go without um uh what what kind of like do you have any kind of proficiency that would be appropriate for making arrows do you have woodworking do you have i don't know fletchery is a um just a survival survival okay you can make you can do you can do another survival check to to craft the arrows um, uh, it's, it's a little harder than like if you had if you had tools like if you had if you were proficient in woodworking or, or something like that I feel like I remember you talking about making arrows early on I'm inclined to give you something like that you're good at survival though so yeah go ahead and make a survival check to, to craft the arrows Yeah, you get three arrows. 
Um, it's not always going to be this hard to make arrows, but you're working with very slim materials. Um, as I'm watching this, I'm just holding my three arrows and being like, oh boy, I better be careful when I'm using them. I don't want to lose them. Do you only have three arrows left? Yeah. Yeah. It's the advantage of having is the advantage of having a sling. Is you kind of just pick up some rocks. <laughs> um all right. Uh I don't remember did somebody say are you going by water or by land? I think we can do water again. I'm liking that idea. Yeah. I mean, does does Robert remember? Did the was the river more treacherous in this half or anything? No, not particularly. Um, okay. It kind of even. It kind of almost. If anything, it levels out a little. Goes um, up okay. until it hits the um, worm tunnel. Um, the first check, uh, unless anybody has anything specific, I think a survival check would be appropriate. Um, you, um, follow the river as it goes and... <clears throat> With a 14, you don't notice until you've gone down the wrong way uh, a bit. But um, you realize you're in whatever the subterranean version of an ox, ox bow, or uh, what are those called? When a river yeah. meanders and then it connects again. It's kind of like that, um, where like there's a, there's a section that kind of drifts off a little bit and then kind of ends. And the river has changed a bit, and it's not just because of erosion. So you got the river a little farther, and it becomes clear that something has changed. The river is going in a different direction now. The walls are less smooth. Um, it's, you can, you can see the, the, uh, direction it used to go has now become a, uh, it, it continues for a while with just like a, a slow trickle and it ends in a pond. Um, it, it seems like the old way has kind of collapsed. Um, the river has been redirected through a slightly fresher tunnel system. Robert, does uh, this mean means... anything to you? Hmm. I mean, Robert, is this is this a is this new news to you, Robert? Is this something? This, you this is definitely. This is not how it used to be. It, it, he does remember that it, it it used to go that way, and now it's going this way. Hmm. Uh, it has shifted into a different tunnel system than than where it flowed through before. Um, it's entirely redirected into this tunnel system, which has not like eroded as much as the other one, which means the banks are going to be, um, they're not going to be as sheer or as slippery, um, but the river is going to be a lot more unpredictable. Right. Then should we um, get off here and <laughs> take the old tunnel, since that's the one? Possibly. The, the old tunnel is going to be much, much slower uh, now that it's... Um, I mean, you can tell immediately that like parts of it are collapsed and you're going to have to be navigating through like a system of tunnels rather than one consistent river. Like it's not going to be clear anymore like which is the correct way. The river, if you continue following the river, Still heading down. It might not 
lead to exactly the same place, but it's still heading down. Uh, Roper's not going to make the call on that. Um, but I'll say if you if you try and go the old way, um, it's going to be a more challenging. Um, there are going to be survival checks, and they're going to be hard to not get lost. Um, and you're not going to have a river to guide you. If you go this way, you have a river to guide you, whether you're taking the land or the water. You just don't know where it's going. Right. Right. When it, where it used to end, was it like, did it end in like a lake? No, it, or, um, maybe it did. Thing? He doesn't know where it ended, really, but it, the river was bisected by a worm tunnel. And so it flowed into the worm tunnel and continued onward. And so the plan was to get off once it entered the worm tunnel. Hmm. Now it's headed down a different tunnel system. There was a system of tunnels that was also bisected by the worm tunnel. A system of like small burrows that, that was bisected by the giant worm tunnel. This could be going through that. But um Roper kind of trails off when he's talking about the the, the burrows. Says Well, hopefully it's not those burrows. Kind of burrows. <laughs> He sighs and he tells you what happened in the burrows. Um, when the caravan reached the worm tunnel and they made camp there for a couple days, scouts explored the system of rivers and the system of burrows that were both bisected by the worm. The scouts that explored the river found that it was pretty treacherous uh, and it was full of leeches. Um, but none of them, like, they all made it back. The group that went in the burrows. Burrows were promising. It seemed like they were going to continue up, and they were pretty easy to traverse. Um, but one of the scouts, the lead scout, out of nowhere, and this is, this is secondhand, this is what, Roper wasn't there. This is what he heard happened. There were four scouts, leader scouts, out of nowhere, shot an arrow and killed one of the other scouts. A third scout, at about the same time in that commotion, was grabbed by something in the dark and pulled away, screaming. The lead scout who had just shot one of the others ran off into darkness and was never seen again. And the, the fourth one came back to tell that story. Right. And his word is reputable, was reputable. Um, they didn't think that they didn't think that uh, they didn't think that like he had done it. Mm -hmm. yeah. As sinister cat. <laughs> really fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, but on the other hand, if it if it is those tunnels, it will lead to the worm tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. Might be worth it to keep following the river just so we don't get lost. Personally, I'd like to take the river just because it's cool. Yeah, and it's a lot faster. Was that Sean? What? Oh, yeah, I thought you said something. You got interrupted. Um, which is like hard not to do for Dylan with the video delay. Um, um, Yeah, it's it's a lot quicker by by river. 
um, you know, if you were traveling by land, even following the river, it would be about twice as long. Um, and then if you were going the other, the old path, it's going to be twice as long if you don't get lost. Continuing by boat. Yeah, I think so. You pass by the old, uh, the old river, and continue into the burrows. Ceiling is no longer covered in uh, stone. It's now um, rough earth. There's still there's still some like smaller stalactites, but this is a much newer. It's still like very, very old, a very old tunnel for stalactites to even begin forming, but um, it's newer than the old river uh, uh, path. Um, uh, the lichen is uh, less now. It starts to disappear. There's still patches of it here and there, but most of this river is now in total darkness only occasionally dimly lit in certain areas. The lichen no longer illuminates the room. Like, it, it does illuminate enough for you to see. It's just enough for you to see, like, where the walls are. So you can tell where you are in the room, but you can't see anything without the light source. So I'm assuming uh, my daddy has got his torch, and anytime Ulan isn't rowing, he's got his... Orb. Yep. The river does slow, though. Um, um, it's a little choppier now, but that's actually a good sign because it means that the river is meeting resistance and it's slowing down. Um, first check was that survival check, and it was a success. What's the next check going to be for this day's travel through the burrows? Um, I guess animal handling did before. I was a bit from uh, from animal. Roper. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, roll roll an animal handling. That's another success. Okay. You uh, are Roper um, is actually able to have the leech scout ahead a little bit. It can't come back and tell you things in any complex way, but it will swim back and like whop up onto the boat if something's up ahead is going to be a problem. So it it'll swim ahead of the boat, and you can see it up there, and it'll like go ahead even farther, and then swim back a little bit, and keep making trips backwards and forwards. At a certain point, you see it catch something and start eating something, and it like hauls itself onto the bank for a little bit. And as you pass by it, you see that it's eating a younger cave leech. And you figure. Any attempt to, like, if you're going to try to convince this leech to, like, call off the others, it's not going to work because there's no kinship between cave leeches. As soon as they're old enough to, old enough to swim, they're on their own. Hmm. Um, and when it's done eating it, you pass it up and it flops back into the water and catches up. Hmm. One more check. If we do insight... Mm -hmm. Just because, Ooh. just because the voice of Admiral Akbar is in my head screaming, it's a trap. But just to um, make sure, like this wasn't some other troop of like I'm envisioning some other group of yeah. somebody's digging this tunnel out, redirecting the river specifically for this situation of travelers coming down here, wanting to make good time wander into our lair. 
you start thinking about that and you can't get it out of your mind, make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> That's true. It will take. You're gonna take seven sanity damage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you would drive yourself crazy, like thinking about all of the ways that this could go wrong. Somebody's plugging against you. Mm-hmm. Like you fall into a like dark rabbit hole of conspiracy theorizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you're just all, you know, no one's, there's like a lull in conversation where no one's talking and you're just left to your mind in this, in this dark maze under the ground. It's not good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm going to give you, I, I want you to add a flaw to your character sheet. Okay. All right. You, whenever you enter for, for the next, like, um until you long rest again anytime you enter a room you uh will have disadvantage on perception checks because you need to look at the ceiling first so you have disadvantage i'm sorry you don't need to tackle all this the practical thing is you um will have disadvantage on perception checks to spot anything that isn't up got it because that's your priority. You, know, you went to a room. It's the first thing you do is you look up. Um, and that's more like a leftover from when you got attacked on the boat. Um, uh, so yeah, disadvantage on perception checks to spot anything that isn't. Um, you could you could write as a flaw eyes on the top of your head. <laughs> Um, somebody else make uh, a check. Snidati is spiraling. Nature. Nature check? Yeah, thinking about critters might be down. Mm, yeah, yeah, do that. Looking at the burrows, it was definitely dug by something big. It seems like there's there's the main large tunnel that was definitely dug by something big. But then there's smaller tunnels that snake off of that. that are like built upon it. They're a little bit newer, but are still very old. And then there's lots of little tunnels that are like burrowed into the walls that are a lot fresher. Uh, it's, they almost look like, like rats or, or something. Um, uh, it's just like a an insane like network of, of various sized burrows. Uh, there's a really really complex ecosystem happening down here that you've never uh, had to think about before. Um, uh, at a certain point, the tunnels do get too narrow for this boat and the boat wedges itself um between two rocks um the the uh water is a lot slower now and it's it's spread out like i feel like part of it must have gone like underground in a way that you didn't notice like there must have been a split in the water that happened um because it seems like there's a lot less water now than there was before. Hmm. Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure if you got lost, but the river's still going where you are now, and it's too small for the boat uh, to consistently. It sections, it's still wide enough and deep enough, but um, at certain parts, it's too narrow, at certain parts, it's too shallow. The boat can't consistently travel any farther. But there is land. So you have no choice but to recover wheelbarrow. Um anybody else have a check idea? 
How about a perception? Yeah, I'll make a perception check. You're walking now on um, a stone with like occasional layers of uh, uh, dark, like black soil that uh, seems pretty rich, but like there's not a lot to take advantage of it. There's no like photosynthesis, so like it's mostly being digested and redigested by various. Is there uh, still so like a? There's still like a clear like path that we're going down though, like as part of the river. You can follow the river, yeah. If you're okay. following the river. So, so it's like the boat's made out of ice, so it's like slippery, right? How yeah. hard is it to just like, even when the water is mostly stopped, how hard is it to just like kick it and keep it going, kind of, you know? Like you were doing that. You were doing that for a while. Um, but eventually it became like kind of exhausting to, to do that because you were having to free it like to a degree that like it was still sailing, uh, but it, but not it might have been long. saving you. It wasn't saving you very much time and it definitely wasn't saving you energy. Okay. But you did get most of the day by boat. So you feel like You've got to be close. If this is if this is actually leading to the worm tunnel, you got to be close. Okay. Um, the perception check. You're mostly keeping an eye on the ceiling. You're looking to make sure you're still heading down. And you're look. <sighs> What are you thinking about, like, the possible... Because Roper is paranoid in this in these borough systems. He doesn't know what he's looking for, what he's worried about. What do you guys think, based on the description? Like, what are you looking for, looking out for in this cave? I mean, I guess I kind of know what Nidot is looking out for. Yeah. It's partly looking out for, like, like people, like a, like a trap. Um, I think I'm also looking for like changes in plant life mm -hmm. that would indicate like danger or just something changing. Yeah. I think you do see that there's a lot of, a lot of like fungus in here that's not luminescent, but like, like you pick up one of the mushrooms and you kind of talk to it a little bit and you know that there's like a lot of decay that happens in here. A lot of like flesh decaying and being absorbed back into the into the earth. So definitely this is a place where things come to die. I've got no intention of that. Even though yeah. it's about me. You um, reach a section where it opens up and there's a large it, it, it's like those pooling caves, actually. It's kind of a roundish chamber. And there's a large pond in the center where the um, river snake around. I'll show you a map in a second. It will end very soon. Ugh. It's fun to work.
Ropert's describing as you're walking, like, they said it was a, they said it was, there was a, the one who survived described a hulking beast. All he, all, all he saw was its gleaming eyes, two eyes, and he felt like he was falling into them. God, that doesn't help me. Um, uh, you're you don't you guys don't have exhaustion anymore, but you long rested. come up here get a good look at this lake with your perception check um notice down here there's a lot of fish in this pond like you see you can immediately see like holding up your your fire or your um produce flame uh you can see like this this pond is like packed with fish there, uh, and, and it looks like there's not a way out of here. It's, it's elevated. It's like an elevated, it's higher up than this. There's a lot of fish in And then the cave leech jumped in and there were no fish in there. <laughs> um, on, the, on the bank of this like little lake thing, yeah. is there like evidence that the tides are changing? Like the, the water level was higher. No, um, it looks like if anything they were lower, and the river came in like a year ago, maybe a little longer. Um, but looking over the edge here, like you're trying to discern. You see a rounded shape that doesn't register as like a creature at first but you realize there's something like hunched over looking down at the pond looking away from you and it's just kind of hanging over the water just looking looking at the water it almost looks like a person but it's very big it's standing like like a person, the way that a person would like crouch down and look into the water. Is it muttering "my precious" to itself? <laughs> Not saying anything. It's completely silent, and it's almost completely still. Um, but it's got it look like antlers, or no, they're antenna, and they twitch a little bit back and forth. And, you know, as you raise your, or to see this, you're illuminating the area. It kind of stands up straight and, like, starts to move around. What do you do? Um, Only the line of states. I'd like to do an insight check to just kind of try to discern if this is something that, like, would immediately attack us on site or... Yeah, make a make an insight check. Sixteen. It you as it moves and starts to stand up, you see it's got two big arms in the front and two heavy legs underneath. And it almost looks like humanoid shaped. It's kind of shaped like a gorilla. Um, but you it has a hard shell on its back and on its arms. And it's, you, you see like, it has these like enormous, what look like forearms. And then the bicep is like very, very thin. It's like, it's, it's insectoid. It's like a bug. It's like a big bug with two arms and two legs and an enormous body. And it like slowly turns around and looks up at you. Um, it 
think the it does occur to you the way that it's sitting looking at the water all those fish in here it could have put the fish there i mean that's the thing that people do um but i do need you to make a charisma saving throw oh boy a natural 20. It's a natural 20. Yeah. But I have minus 2. So. You have minus 2, so it's an 18. Um, that's definitely a success. Um, it turns around and you see these two beautiful, gleaming eyes, like, on either side of its face. Um, and there's like something so like hypnotizing but you look between them and you see two eyes two little black beady eyes in between them like wait, those are eyes they're like they're like something else on the, on the sides of its head um it has enormous mandibles on the front of its face as it turns around and it kind of gently clicks them together and then puts a hand up and starts to climb up the edge of the cliff here, away from the water, towards you. What do you do? Just very slowly, it's not like charging at you, but it sees you, and it looks at you for a minute, and you stand there and like are looking at it, and it starts to slowly, methodically climb up towards you with its big, heavy arms. And, uh, when I am using like speech of beast and leaf, how does that work? Do I like talk and it just understands me, or am I like? Yeah, it's up to you. Okay. Do you feel, uh, do you feel so, like yeah. you talk in common, or do you feel like you make like? Yeah, I think that probably it's like some. Mm -hmm. Different, like, Do you feel like it's like when people yell at bears, where it's just sort of like making noises that scare them, or soothing, like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Like not animal noises, but yeah. just kind of like emotional sounds? Right, yeah. Yeah, I think it's okay. that. I think it's like a real basic, like... So what are you like doing? Thing. So I'm just going to try to convey that we're not a threat. What do you think that, that, gonna... what do you think that sounds like to you? Like from Ulan, what sound does Ulan make? I want to hear you make a silly sound. Um. Yeah, I think just like a quiet, like, like you did, just like. Mm, mm. Okay. So everyone else. Okay. So the rest like, of my party. You're, you're you're like looking at it, and you're going. Whoop. Yeah, and I'm like keeping my hands visible, okay. and I'm gonna. Where did which direction did we come from? This way. Okay. But uh um, so you, you back up towards them, you're making the sound, and everyone else, you haven't seen anything that Ulan's seeing. You just saw him go up to the edge and then stay there for a minute and start to back up and go. Hmm. And you do see like a shape round the edge of the top there and lift its head up. Ulan make another Christmas save throw. Guys are looking at Ulan right now, though. Okay, that's a one. All right. Um, Not a natural one. A one. Oh, I'm going to roll a d20, I think. It's a d d No, it's a d8. Old mate. So, what are you? You're holding a. Make an attack roll with your produce flame. So, you see Ulan slowly back up with one hand out produce flame in the other. 
Ooh, and you guys see, start to see a big shape around the edge there. And as soon as you look over at that, Nidati, you uh, feel Ulan grab your shoulder and you look over like, what? And the produce flame is coming at your face. He's trying to like pie your face with the produce flame. Oh God. And you like grab his hand and <laughs> wrestle it away for a second. And like you make eye contact with, with Ulan and you see this faint glow disappearing from his eyes as he like looks at you. That's where we're gonna end. Dude. The session. Um, <laughs> Damn. Uh, everyone else will like see that happen. And then just in time, you look back over the edge and you see an Umber Hulk quickly gorilla running towards you guys, like legs over arms. Mm -hmm. It like, well, you know, it like gallops with putting it, it like, um, like, uh, the guy from Split when he runs like an animal. No? No. Yeah. It runs like that. And it's just galloping towards you. I'll reveal it. <laughs> You can see it. Yeah. Okay. That was a good one. It was long. I'm sorry we didn't have combat. <laughs> but you did you did like a lot. Cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely have combat next time. All right. All right. Cool. Good night. Have a good one. Yep. Good night.